Hello out there in uh, All Japan Worldwide fan group. This is Dave, your administrator. I uh, decided that I would try to record some audio for the All Japan show for today, or I guess tomorrow if you're in uh, Pacific Coast, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to give a quick rundown of the card real quick so we can get down to it. The show starts in about four minutes. I know there's going to be a little bit of uh, previews and such uh, while we watch. But anyways, the opener has a, I believe is a 10-man tag between Atsushi Mariyama, Yutaka Yoshi, Naoshi Sano, Kichi Sato, and Carbo Ito, who is also a sponsor, uh, versus uh, the pair of Lands In wrestlers Masakado Ishikari, alongside Revlon, Sodamanshi, and FG Mask. I guess they are all Lands In wrestlers, my apologies. I am getting my card information from Pudesuspirit.com. Uh, Charles, he does God's work, and uh, he's a great guy. He does a lot of cool stuff. Go, Charles. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the second match, uh, we have uh, the great Masanobu Fuchi teaming up with Tajiri, formerly All Japan World Junior Heavyweight Champion, alongside Yohei Nakajima versus Ozamu Nishimura, the also former All Japan World Heavyweight Champion, Ultimo Dragon, and Kotaro Suzuki. Moving on to the third match, Koji Iwamoto, the uh, former Spativa star, he will be wrestling up against Josh Bottom, who is a UK wrestler. I don't know much about him, but I've heard some good things. So we'll see what turns up uh, from this young man who is evidently going to be wrestling uh, further on the tour. Uh, next match is a special preview for the Champions Carnival. Has four participants in Naoya Nomura, uh, Kai, and Yoshitatsu, and Yuji Hino. Uh, Hino would be the X Factor here as he is relatively unknown to All Japan. He's work, been, been working mostly with Wrestle 1 and a little bit with uh, Noah and some other promotions. Uh, fifth card, fifth match on the card, we'll see a special six man tag between Evolution, uh, that is Suwama, Hikaru Sato, and Yusuke Okada. We'll go up against Kazuki Fujita, former IWGP Heavyweight Champion, former Pride Star, also Kendo Kashin flanked also by Nozawa Rongai. We move on to this tag team, all Asian tag team title match between Junakiyama and Nagata. Let's call them the Exploder Brothers uh, versus uh, the reformation of Wild, Ti Wild Child, uh, Takao Mori and Manalu Nakanishi. Seventh, card, seventh match on the card, we'll see uh, Atsushi Aoki, also a member of Evolution, take on Shuji Kondo. Uh, this will be Aoki's first defense, and this will also be Kondo's first All Japan World Junior Championship match in about four years. Kondo has been away in Wrestle One for about that amount of time. Uh, I've coughed up the title to, I believe, Yoshinobu Kanemaru on his way out. We move on to match number eight. It'll be a tag team, world tag team title match between the Osaka Big Guns. My man Zeus and Bodyguard will take on Ryoji Sai. And Dylan James, who was formerly known as James Ryden. And then the main event, we have Joe Doring versus Kento Miyahara. Now, uh, this is the match that I think everybody's looking forward to the most, admittedly. And I'm going to say it right now. Big Joe, Killer Joe, he's going to take this one, guys. He's going to walk out of there with the Triple Crown. And with that said, uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining me for the English cast. We are recording this, so this will be usable uh, offline or uh, if you're just watching the show on your own leisure you don't have to watch this live but I am waiting just the same as you guys for the show to start up so uh, I will also go over a little bit over the Champions Carnival which All Japan is starting up their viewing service almost specifically for uh, the the Champions Carnival is I believe the longest existing singles tournament in Japan uh, dating back to the 70s and it has definitely helped sway the momentum of different wrestlers to all kinds of stardom uh, all the way from uh, I'd say Misawa, Tenryu, Kawada. Tenryu might not have won a championship carnival actually that come to mind uh, but uh, there are definitely some that have benefited from winning that tournament <clears throat> but we have all kinds of uh, special participants like Yuji Hino and you have uh, your Shingo Takagi, and of course you can't go on without talking about the uh, the bride of the the bride of the ball, the Maofuji Maofuji, who it's his homecoming, 
Uh, he, of course, a trained wrestler over in All Japan and left to go with Noah and uh, Misawa. So he has not wrestled there since losing the Junior World Heavyweight title to Kaz Hayashi. That's a couple years back. Um, if I remember correctly, he hasn't been back in a while. So, yeah, all these new special guests will make the uh, Championship Carnival just that much more um, special. I think they're trying really hard to get people to subscribe and to watch the service. And so uh, I think it's a great idea. I hope that it pays off for Uncle June and the guys because we as All Japan fans, we will love them no matter what happens. But, you know, it would be nice to see their their due, you know. like It would be nice to see them pay off. So I'm going to try again to see if the, the, the show is on. Can any of you guys get on the show? Oh, well, I totally don't mind you watching Judgment because DDT is a great promotion. It's an awesome promotion. I like it. Life Feed is on. Well, I need to get on that then. There we go. Okay. Let's get down to it, folks. <laughs> Okay. I have cut out the audio for legal reasons because I do not want to impede or intrude on anything of the uh, the show and the promotion. You know, we really appreciate everything they do. They are doing a rundown of the card, but I am I've already done that. If you are already listening, so uh, again, uh, I'm getting some help from uh, a couple of guys in the group. Uh, Joe, Marshall, and uh, Corey. Really appreciate you guys helping out. This is a very u a unique experience, I would say. I've never tried anything like this before. Uh, but then again, I went to college, and so I know something about uh, trying new experiences. So anyways, um, I'm over here. We're over here, me and Marshall. We're over here in uh, Long Beach, California to watch the New Japan show. And so we're totally stoked about that. But we're also very stoked about uh, getting to meet some of our fellow All Japan Worldwide group members. Um, I had to get back over to our Airbnb so that I could set everything up, do some test runs. Um, I wanted to meet up with uh, my buddies uh, X and Bob, but they had stuff to take care of. So totally understandable. Uh, but we're going to catch up tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be a big meetup over at the... Uh, Ah, oh, geez, I can't remember the name of the venue or the, the place, but we're going to go over there after the uh, the Strong Style Evolved event, and there's going to be an awesome raffle, all kinds of giveaways, and they're going to be auctioning, uh, sorry, they're going to be uh, putting the proceeds towards uh, Yoshihiro Takayama, and uh, if you don't know about Yoshihiro Takayama, he uh, suffered an unfortunate incident uh, in the ring, and he has been in a quadriplegic state and he's kind of you know been in and out of uh, care but he's he's doing better but uh you know he still has all these medical expenses and takes a lot and he was a very loved man and he's loved by a lot of us because he's been in some great matches he's done some awesome work even outside of uh pro wrestling uh if you watched him <laughs> if you watched this fight with don fry you know that he <laughs> he take an ass whooping so he got my respect so anyways um, back to uh, the event is uh, Takayama Mania. These uh, proceeds are going to go towards Takayama Mania. It's going to be awesome. Good time there. So I believe the show is going to start in a few minutes. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and giving this a try. I'm a huge All Japan fan just like you guys. I'm no different. But uh, I would like English commentary or at least English subtitles. So if we work together towards providing that, maybe they'll see that we want it and they'll go and do something about it you know so let's let's work together all of us because we all we all somewhat are all the same we all want good things for all japan but the match is going to start so here we go i'm not super familiar with saitama super arena it's uh not as uh Familiar to me as say your Kurken Hall or uh, your Nippon Budokan or uh, even uh, Ryoku Go Ryogoku Kokugen. <laughs> That's a little tough pronounce, but uh, so I I think the last time I saw an event for Saitama Super Arena was possibly a, a Pride show or something like that. 
So it'll be interesting to check the layout. If I had to put a guess, I would say that is FG Mask. I believe the Lands Ends team's coming out first. Oh, yes. Revlon, Sodemanji, FG Mask. But I don't think Masakado has come out yet. I'm still... Oh, no, he has. I see him in the background. I'm very unfamiliar with Ishikari. Um, I've seen him in a couple of matches, but uh, I was wondering if it was the same guy from uh, WAR. It's a wrestling promotion that Genichiro Tendiyu is a part of back in the day, but... It wasn't him. I was a little disappointed. Uh, suffice to say, I'm a little unknown to a good amount of these Land's End wrestlers, but, uh, you know, I do believe in a DOG size mission to bring out uh, wrestling to all of Asia. He is the Asian heavyweight champion, and uh, that point is getting put across. So, good on him. Good on the promotion. This Kichi Sato, always in a lot of Gold's Gym gear. There's the pink giant, Yutaka Yoshie. Mariyama, I always like him without... I, I, I like the black trunks better. And there's the man right there flanked behind you, Otakas. Carbel Ito. Oh. There he is. Carbel Ito. Trainee, uh, I believe he's uh, spent about at least two years in and out of the dojo with uh, the guys. Uh, I probably, I'd assume my Oki. Um... And uh, he's a sponsor of the show of uh, All Japan. And he has been there, I believe, about three to four years now. So good on him. Uh, Ito, <laughs> I believe, has produced a, a couple of self-produced shows with different wrestlers outside of the promotion. So it's good to expand, expand the brand. One thing that uh, I'm always happy to see, I know that there's some people that are not huge on streamers, but I actually still kind of like them. It's a nice hearkening back to, you know, Back in the day. The announcers are, of course, doing the official announcements of all the wrestlers on the teams. This is something I, I prefer as a, a Pudesu fan over the years. Is it kind of gives a more of a sport. They, they do regard it more of a sport. And this is something I think a lot of people appreciate as an alternative to America. And it looks like FG Mask is going to start this one off. And the youngest guy in the bunch, Kichi Sato, is going to start it off. Kichi Sato, of course, a Kotaro Suzuki trainee. They start off with a circle and a lockup. Headlocking him, bouncing him off the ropes. Shoulder tackle. Getting a little momentum at the start, but that might not stay around much longer. Tosses him into the corner. Head full of steam. Nice body press. FGMS has kind of a cool outfit. He's got a green and reddish thing. Sato with the spinning heel kick answers back. Sato's partners run in and make sure they cut off FGMS, the lands in wrestlers. Ito gets in there, start a chant. It looks like Ito's going to be doing some flying. Let's see. Oh. That camera angle was a little tough. I, I really hope that there's a, a better angle we can get a look on that. It looked, I, I, I would hope Ito hit it pretty good. Hard to say. Ito goes on the offensive, couple of chops to FG Mask, getting him up on the top rope. He's going for the Huron Conrana. Not bad. Very good. Going for Penny. He's going to get a two. Ito goes back off the ropes. FG stops him somehow with just a hand signal. Manages to get in a Insigiri. Tags in. Oh, jeez. Hikari. Ito now kind of trying to gauge what he wants to do 
with the Lands Inn representative. He's saved by Domaji. Carvel going for a giant swing now. Very nice. Shades of Hiroshi Hase. Rose was a big fan of the giant swing. He got about maybe eight, nine revolutions. Tags into the jet, the pink giant, Yotaka Yoshie. It looks like he, I think he bleached his hair pink for the, for the event. Elbow strike to the lands in representative. I'm going to take a guess and say that one's Ishikari. Still a little unfamiliar about these lands in wrestlers. They uh, sometimes come into the promotion. Damaji manages to get away, stuns him momentarily with a dropkick, bounces off the ropes, and is denied with the shoulder block. Yutaki, y Yoshie tries to go for a follow-up elbow job and misses. The Lands End team manages to get in there and cut off Yutaki's support. Yutaka support. Ah. FG Mask goes in there with a head full of steam. Now Ishikari and Masakado and Sodamaji. Revlon finishing up that one last. <laughs> Forgot about him. Double team now. Masakado's in there with Damaji. Yoshie manages. They manage to get him over. But it looks like Damashi really took a toll on his lower back. FG Mass follows up with the kick to the back of the head of Yoshie. Yoshie always has that right knee wrapped up. Been a long occurring injury for him. And Revelon hits a beautiful Phoenix Splash. Sorry, 420. 450, apologies. And follow up by Ishikari with the knee drop. He goes for a pin. He only gets a two count broken up by backup. Now she's Sano now. Working out a plan with Mariyama. They're working on something. Managed to cut off Ishikari before he could get collected. Somehow he, it could, he's been in there longer than the five count. Cut off by Sotomaji. Ishikari, FG Mask, Masakado now in there. And there's a very impressive... Uh, Powerbomb combo from the Lands In team, but it looks like everybody took a little bit of a uh, damage in that one. USGA with a running, running power slam on Ishikari. Looked like a three count there. Did not get the three count. Bounces off the ropes. It's a body splash. One, two, three, and that one's over. Yutaka USGA picks up the win. Picks up a little bit of steam heading into the Champions Carnival. I'm being told the audio is lagging very consistently. My apologies. I'm trying to uh, uh, work with the internet connection as best as I can, but uh, we be rest assured this is recorded. And so, if you would like to just uh, watch the show later or, with, or just with the audio track later, I will not be offended, and it is not a, a problem at all. It is totally fine, but the recording will come out flawlessly. All wrestlers exit out the area. Yoshie, of course, always the gentle giant, always showing love to the fans. Reminds me a little bit of Kirby. Everybody likes Kirby.
I want to thank you guys for uh, listening in and uh, using the uh, audio commentary. Uh, trying my best to kind of uh, give you a rundown on uh, all the uh, All Japan goings on. Uh, we are just moments away from our next tag match, which is Nakajima, Tajiri, and Fuchi versus Nishimura, Suzuki, and Ultimo Dragon. Dragon got a, uh, I believe he just picked up a sponsorship from Brother Printers here or over there in Japan. And, uh, well, I mean, good on him. I, I you know, it, it's it's hard to gauge the marketability of wrestlers these days. Uh, 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 the old-timer wrestlers, but Ultimo still proves he's still got some, uh, he's still got some pep in him. He's still got some name recognition. There's a good reason. And out comes Nishimura, or as I like to call him, the Nish. It's probably a terrible nickname, but, uh. There was a, a good time where uh, I thought he could uh, actually become IWGP Heavyweight Champion. And uh, I still believe he could get a good run out of him. But uh, that's kind of on him. He's got to decide on how uh, how serious he wants to get in there and mix it up with the, the heavyweights and such. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's always been a good wrestler. He's always brought a great amount of talent. Nishimura having words with the crowd. Nishimura, of course, a uh, protege of the uh, the Funks, more specifically of Dory Funk Jr. Uh, Nishimura found his way over to Florida, just like uh, Yushi, Yuki Ishikawa, who spent time also with uh, the Gotches. And uh, you can see it a lot in their wrestling and their training regimen and how they carry themselves in the ring. Uh, Gutch rubbing off on guys like Ishikawa. Gentlemen coming to the ring now. I uh, I really wish I had a solid idea on who it was. Um, it, it could be somebody who is uh, a, a, an old timer opponent of his. It could be uh, a British uh, wrestling uh, icon. It's very hard to tell because uh, Nishimura is a very big fan of the British wrestling, of course. Big fan of that catches can style. Nishimura is synonymous with that Muga style of wrestling. Taught with him, taught by, taught to him by Tatsumi Fujinami. Muga, of course, being Japanese for selflessness. It's a very beautiful art form. It's kind of a lost, uh, lost art, really. But uh, catches can wrestling. It's uh, it's it's very fun to watch if it's the kind of thing you're into. And uh, Nishimura is ex excelled at that very well, and uh, Europeans have excelled at that very well too. If somebody would uh, like to fill in what he is saying, that would be nice. Only because uh, I have to cut out the uh, the audio for the show in order to make sure we're good and legal and we're not uh, infringing on any copyrights or uh, you know we're not stepping on any legal toes. Because the last thing we want to do is you know ruffle some feathers uh, in a legal way. Because we we do appreciate everything that All Japan does and we appreciate the product. And uh, judging by the red, white, and green, I would imagine who's coming out next. He's uh, the former J Crown champion, former All Japan World Heavy World Junior Heavyweight champion, former IWGP Junior Heavyweight champion, Ultimo Dragon. Oh no! Wow, my apologies. It is Katara Suzuki, followed by there he is. Okay. And he's wearing one of his old school outfits. Uh, Ultimo Dragon is. He's wearing uh, the colors, uh, uh, old school colors. Um, uh, it's a slight variation on his old school mask. Uh, it's just very emphasis of the Mexican colors. Kotaro coming out, of course, in his Zelda and Gundam inspired gear. And the cameras go a little berserk <laughs> as they uh, enter into the ring and, uh, well, pose for the crowd. 
Suzuki been spending a lot more time in all Japan these days uh, ever since losing his uh, double crown over in uh, zero one uh, has been spending a lot more time in uh, all Japan and um, I'm sure that they're all happy to have him back especially his best friend Atsushi Aoki who is a member of uh, Evolution also the head trainer of the school Aoki and Suzuki very good friends Ultimo Dragon I got a chance to meet personally very kind man Spoke a little bit in Spanish with him. Always glad to see him. He's probably going to be one of my favorite junior heavyweight wrestlers of all time. But uh, the man is real accomplished. He's been everywhere. He's done it all. And uh, All Japan is very, very lucky to have him in their ranks. Referee checking over Suzuki that he doesn't have anything in his trunks or his boots. Making sure Nishimura does not. And out comes Tajiri. Flanked by Nakajima. And of course, the danger zone man himself, Masanobu Fuchi. Fuchi now has to be one of the active, most act, living, one of the, the, the excuse me, <laughs> one of the most the longest living active wrestlers in our modern day ja modern day Japanese wrestling scene. Tajiri, of course, always armed with his mist. You can never count him out. Nakajima not having a particularly strong showing in the junior Battle of Glory tournament, but he is a former two time now Gawa TV champion so you can never count him out Fuji also somebody who spent time training with the gotch system with uh, Carl gotch over in Florida it looks like Kotaru will start off for his team and Yohei Nakajima will start off for his. Nakajima, formerly an Osaka Pro Wrestling, excuse me, formerly an Okinawa Pro Wrestling wrestler, Menzo Aoji, the drunk man. He is locking up with Kotaru. Kotaro, my apologies. Clean break. Mariyama manages to get in an elbow strike. They trade break, They trade elbow strikes back and forth. Rolling solo butt from Mariyama. Tries to flip him over. Suzuki is too quick for him. Mariyama with head scissors. Suzuki manages to get out of it. Mari Suzuki sets up Mariyama for a 6-1-9. He counters out of that. Mariyama with the kick to the chest. Suzuki with the uppercut. They both block each other's respective offensive countermeasures. Trying to get some distance between them now. Get some breathing before locking back up in the test of strength. Matayama gets control now. Twists his arm around him. Tajiri tags in now. Tajiri... Not as fast as he used to be, but those kicks still resonate pretty damn hard. Mariyama. Ah, not Mariyama. Tajiri locks up, gets the advantage. Suzuki tries to break his grip on his arm, but he won't. Suzuki manages to flip his way out. Running the ropes now. Tajiri tries to go for a double arm smash. Manages to get another hit into Suzuki. Drop kick by Suzuki now. Suzuki rolls out. Tags in Nishimura. Nishimura and Tajiri. No strangers to each other. It was in Tajiri's promotion WNC that Nishimura won. Had an opportunity at winning the top title of a promotion for once. Tajiri bounces off the ropes. 
Nishimura with a shoulder block. Oh, gets him into a Cobra Twist. Not grounded yet. That happens to be one of Tajiri's weaknesses for Nishimura. He always manages to trap him in that. Nishimura with the European uppercut now. Sends Tajiri off the ropes. Handspring elbow back to the face of Nishimura. Rolls out and gets a tag into Masanobu Fushi. Fuchi with the tag now to Ultimo Dragon. Dragon and Fuchi. No strangers to each other themselves. Fuchi challenged for Ultimo Dragon's junior heavyweight title. Came away unsuccessful. Maybe two of the slower paced wrestlers in the division, but nonetheless... Lots of knowledge, lots of experience between these two. Lock up Fuchi with the headlock, bulldogging him. And those punches to the face. Referee is signaling for Fuchi to cut it out with the open, with the closed fist punches, but Fuchi just will ignore him. He does not care. Fuchi does not care. He just does not care. But that's Fuji for you. Fuji known for a time for being a torture master. An excellent submission wrestling style master. Fuji giving the business to the referee. Ultimo trying to explain his position but Fuji just does not care. They lock up. Fuji with stomps to the stomach now. Fuji with a body slam. He's stalling on it. But the crowd loves him. And they love those body slams. They say when Fuji body slams somebody. An angel gets its wings. And uh, I, I happen to think that, that that's, probably, that's probably true. To some degree. Fuji still holding Ultimo up in the air. The crowd going nuts. Fuji's side going nuts. But I'll tell you who's not. Ultimo Dragon's tag partners. Ultimo cuts off Suzuki. Rakes him in the eyes. The referee did not see it. Referee is distracted by Fuji's side now. Fuji with a body slam. How long is he going to hold it on Suzuki now? You're going to have to start calling Fuchi the master of hang time. And down Suzuki goes. Fuchi's pretty winded after that, but the mere fact that he can body slam somebody, that's like, oh, an ultimate with a roll up. Fuchi kicks out at two. Ultimo, of course, known for flash pins and using that Mahistra, La Mahistra to win multiple titles, to win multiple matches. Fuchi sends Ultimo up the ropes, fakes out Fuchi. Fuchi tries to hit him with a drop kick and got punked out. Ultimo stretching, trying to get circulation back up into his upper shoulder area. Slowly picks up Fuchi, using some of those close punches while headlocked, just like Fuchi was using. Referee is saying Ultimo, signaling Ultimo not to use any close punches. Fuji's in the background now. Back up now. Apologies. Tosses Ultimo against the ropes. Fuji with the cake kick to the face. And there goes a drop kick. He finally hits the drop kick on Ultimo Dragon. Here comes Ultimo side to break it up. Fuji cuts off Mariyama. Kind of gotten a bit of a mess here now. But still, the legal men remain in the ring. Fuji trying to get a stretch out. 
get an eye rake? Will he try for one more body slam? Will we say hang time? A little more hang time. He's going to pick him up. Oh, Ultimo slips out. Fuchi cradles him now. Only gets a two count. Suzuki and Nishimura break it up. Referee's trying to get control of this thing. Ultimo trying for Lamahe Straw. He gets it in. One, two, three. And there's a three count. Ultimo wins with Lamahe Straw. Ultimo. While not junior heavyweight champion and was the not was not a participant in the junior battle of glory tournament, still remains strong in the division, winning key, all kinds of key wins. Most importantly, staying out of the win, out of staying out of the loss column. And it looks like uh, Nishimura has the NKPWA world heavyweight title in his hands. Ultimo thanks the crowd. Was doing some checking and I cannot seem to find when Nishimura got that NKPWA title. It stands for New Korean Pro Wrestling Association. He had lost it in 2009. So interesting how he manages to get it back later. Ultimo goes over and visits the timekeeper, the bell ringer, his, uh, uh, Nishimura's guest. Funny enough, Ultimo and Nishimura both New Japan trainees. Ultimo did not finish his training in all J in New Japan. Nishimura did, but led totally different paths. One became a politician, and uh, one became one of the most uh, uh, well-respected trainers in uh, pro wrestling history. Tajiri Mariyama or uh, Nakajima look a little bummed out, but they will live to fight another day. Pretty good sized crowd out there. Up next, we have Bodom and Iwamoto coming up. Um, again, uh, Bodom is from the UK. I do not know too much about him, but I have heard some good things. And Iwamoto, of course, is the former Sportiva wrestler that was signed, I believe, last year to a contract to be exclusively with All Japan Pro Wrestling, although he still does appearances on the outside. Iwamoto, uh, somebody I believe is very capable of running the junior heavyweight division. And so I think that somebody like Bottom could be a good test to see how he handles opponents of uh, different backgrounds. And here comes Bottom right now. Bottom looks to be somewhat gingerly accepting the crowd, slapping some hands. He's got a chain wrapped around his wrist. I did not, I did not think that was going to make it into uh, the match. <laughs> he was, uh, he had it in his promo picture, and uh, the referee is asking him kindly to uh, get rid of the chain. And out comes out Iwamoto, as I like to call him, the Red Meteor. Iwamoto, an indie darling for a very long time, wasn't known if he was going to sign with any promotion until he finally signed with All Japan from Sportiva. And he's made some killer moves since then. He did win last year's Junior Battle of Glory. And ever since then, he's kind of wavered with the win-loss record, but always with strong showings. Lots of possibilities. Good-looking kid. Great move set. Crowd seems to really like him. I think he's not too much further out from being junior heavyweight champion, but is he going to go after it after Aoki? Or is he going to go after it 
with Kondo as champion. Only time will tell. I want to thank you guys again for listening to the audio commentary, English alternative commentary for this show. My name is Dave. I am your admin for All Japan Worldwide fan group. I want to thank you guys for listening in. They shake hands, look civil, and they circle each other. It's a lockup. But I'm off, off the mat, just showing all kinds of power and ring prowess right off. Manages to slide right off of Iwamoto's mat work. Easily. Iwamoto looks a little panicked. Lock up. Iwamoto manages to get a into a single crab. Grabbed a leg, managed to turn it into from a leg lock into side leg lock into a Boston crab. Iwamoto trying to get his way out of it, just barely. They shake hands. They lock up now, trying to jog for position. Very mat intense match so far. Mat intense match. Excuse me. Bottom. Flipping out of the test of strength now. Manages to get the go behind on Iomoto. Rolls him up for a two count. Bottom looking very impressive. He obviously decided he wanted to bring his A game today. Headlock now. Iwamoto bounces bottom off from the headlock. Bottom with a body slam. Slams in down. The impact is reeling to Iwamoto. Bottom sends Iwamoto to the outside. Tope. Right through the ropes. Bottom's looking real sharp here. This wrestler from the UK has definitely got something to him. Chops over to Iwamoto. Iwamoto's into the guardrail now. Still hasn't done anything too heelish yet. I think Iwamoto would have done the same thing. Cover in a two count. But I'm starting to show a little bit more heel tendencies now. Or maybe he's just trying to invoke a fire inside of Iwamoto. Sunu picks into a rollover. Only a two count. Bottom didn't really cover those shoulders over. Made it relatively easier for him to get right back up. Bottom now. With a backdrop. With a body scissors. Body scissors won't let go. Ref calls for the th five count, makes it that three. Bottom now with an elbow strike to Iwamoto. Bottom caught by the judo throw. My apologies. I wish I knew the term correctly to say it, but I'm not even going to try. Iwamoto now with an elbow strike of his own. Iwamoto going in the offensive. Kick to the stomach. He tries to send him to the corner. Iwamoto sent to the corner. Iwamoto answers back with a shoulder tackle. Bottom now clutching his left arm. Iwamoto firing up the crowd. Vertical suplex on bottom. Iwamoto gets a two count. Bottom now, 
trying to get some kind of leverage. It won't work. I have a motor comes from behind, but bottom answers with an elbow shot to the face. Bottom tries to bounce off the ropes. Iowa slides underneath him. Iowa Moto goes for a he goes for a Cobra twist. He manages to get him blocked right in the middle of the ring. Bottom has nowhere to go. But Bottom manages to break the hold. He manages to go behind. German suplex with a hold. He gets a two count. Technical match so far. Almost a gut wrench power bomb. He's holding it for a two count. But I'm pulling out all sorts of offensive wizardry here. Definitely impressing the crowd. But I'm now going to the top rope with Iwamoto. Bottom now looking for a superplex. He manages to get it out. Iwamoto goes down and he's looking like he wishes it was Monday already. Iwamoto is going to definitely need an Epsom salt bath after that one. His back went straight into the mat after that superplex. Bottom is not somebody to be taken lightly. Bottom now. On the ring apron with Iwamoto. Hits him with a forearm to the back. Setting him up for a power bomb or a pile driver. Iwamoto tries his best to keep the leverage away from bottom. Iwamoto breaks away from the hold. Iwamoto has him in a front neck lock. Shades of Junakayama. Bottom with a fierce elbow strike. Bottom with a tombstone pile driver on the apron. Is he going to hit it? He hit it on the apron. Jesus. Or Jesus. Whichever you prefer. But either way, Iwamoto is down. He is looking up at the lights right now. Bottom collecting himself after that tombstone pile driver on the ring apron. Bottom really wanting to prove himself up against the red meteor. You probably wonder why I'm calling Imamoto the red meteor. Well, uh, Kai has a move. His finisher is called Meteor Impact. Well, Iwamoto. Reminds me a lot of a young Kai. I mean, a real, you know, just awesome junior wrestler. A lot of potential. I think Imamoto could become a heavyweight eventually. And, oh, knee to the face of bottom now. Imamoto cinches him up. Snake Eyes, oh! He's got him up for a two count. He picks up bottom now. Germans revolve with German of his own. Rolls through another judo, judo. It looked like a judo trip. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, and it looks like Iwamoto pulled it out. It looks like Iwamoto's won. I was a little confused myself. You'll have to excuse me. The uh, the feed is kind of uh, skipping a little here and there, but I believe that Iwamoto got the three count with his. It got a almost an STO looking type of uh, maneuver on him and uh, sent bottom down and uh, I guess bottom basically got the night the lights knocked out of him enough to where basically he got him down for the three count but Iwamoto goes on to win the red meteor wins bottom looking real sharp here in his debut though very impressive with some of the moves I've seen from bottom. Definitely going to have to do some more research on this young man, but I could tell he really wants to be here in All Japan Pro Wrestling. And I'm pretty sure Uncle June can use all the help he could get as far as foreign talent that is eager to prove themselves in All Japan, just like Maximo or uh, Danny Jones, who is uh, now wrestling with progress, I believe.
And if not, well, Danny's still a hell of a wrestler. Either way, Iwamoto comes away with a win. Big fan of Iwamoto. I think of really big things in this guy's future. I'm also looking at the uh, the Twitter feed here for the live show, and it seems like a couple of uh, English-speaking folks are chiming in and giving Bottom some love. I, I have to agree, he definitely showed a very strong showing in the match, but uh, in the end, it was Iwamoto that showed that he was uh, the man. We're seeing a video collection of all the uh, wrestlers that will be appearing in the uh, Champions Carnival this year. In the two blocks, you got Joe, Kento, Ishikawa, Naya Nomura, Bodyguard, Kai, Suwama, Zeus, Naomi Jimafuji, Shingo Takagi, Jun Akiyama, Pink Giant. But in this special tag match, it'll be Naya Nomura tagging up with Kai, reforming Kaimura up against Yoshitatsu and uh, Yuji Hino, the, free the freelancer team. Kaimura, of course, last year was the team that was put together in a uh, last second when uh, Jake Lee got injured. His ACL was uh, ruptured in a uh, tag title defense uh, with the uh, with his tag partner, Nomura, in uh, the next stream. And so Nomura was forced to find a partner. Kai answered the call. And so Kai and Nomura took on strong Big Japan. Daisuke Sekimoto and Yuji Okabayashi and uh, did not come out on that one. Our first team coming out is... You'll have to forgive me. The uh, the audio is turned off and so I'm not able to hear anything on, on their end either. So I pretty much just have to wait for the cues for the wrestlers to come out. want to thank you guys for uh, uh, being a part of the All Japan Worldwide fan group. Really appreciate your participation on there. Out comes Yuji Hino. Hino, of course, spending a good chunk of the last, uh, nah, say, 18 months over in uh, Wrestle 1. Uh, I believe he was the uh, singles champion, the Wrestle 1 champion. You know, of course, has seen work in several promotions in the indie circuit. And, of course, he knows showing off his bird, which he did not buy at the pet store, I can assure you. Nikan Lee is your referee. Nikan is, a, of course, formerly, a, or she may still currently a referee at a Big Japan for Wrestling, but that's what I know, mostly know her from. Yoshitatsu already in the ring. His tag team partner for tonight. Her resurgence in All Japan Pro Wrestling, managing to basically win over uh, and charm a good amount of the crowd. Uh, Yoshitatsu, also world tag team champion. And out comes Kaimura. Which is a team that I actually kind of dig and wouldn't mind if they stay together. But I don't think it's, uh, it's happening because uh, Namura is a part of Next Stream. And so he would rather team with his stable mates more than understandable. Hopefully uh, Yuma Aoyagi will be back soon. And they will be able to get back to tagging and having their tag team again. Jake Lee, of course, also a part of that. Jake Lee should be back sometime in the near future. I'm surprised he didn't come back for the Champions Carnival, but it's better that he take his time. The healing process, we want all that to go over well. We want to wish uh, Jake Lee and uh, Yuma uh, speed recovery. And you don't... You, he, that's pretty funny. Hino has his tattoo in English on his of his last name. Um, don't know what to say that, but hey, you know... Maybe his uh, reading comprehension of English is pretty good. It could be a style thing. But it looks like Nomura is going to start this one off.
And it looks like Yoshitatsu will be starting off for his team as well. Currently in the ring, we have two wrestlers that have had World Tag Team title reigns in All Japan that have been uh, probably less than a month uh, in the last six months. So it's pretty interesting to see the diversity in the promotion of how the wrestlers are kind of used at the current state. Yoshitatsu teaming with Kinto and winning the World Tag Team title, but Kinto tonight will be in the hunt for the Triple Crown title. Nomura, of course, tag partners and occasional... Oh, sorry, a tag, occasional tag partners with Kento. Oh, and a, a kick... Kai kicks over to Yoshitatsu. Nomura cuts off... Hino. Kai dives into Yoshitatsu now. Nomura cuts off Hino again. Kai spent a good chunk of 2016 and part of 2017 wrestling in a good amount of FMW cards and getting roughed up and death matches. He is not afraid to get in there and get a little nasty when he comes down to a fight. Kai Nomura now working over Yoshitatsu. Nomura... With a leg chip, Kai with the drop kick to the face. He tries to go for a. He gets a two count. Pinning him, trying for the three. Kai now with a handful of hair, slamming his Yoshitasu's face into the turnbuckle, tagging out to Nomura, the member of Next Stream. Nomura with stomps to the Yoshitatsu. Nomura now sending Yoshitatsu to the ropes. Running elbow to the face of Tatsu sends him down. He goes for a pin. Gets almost a two count. Nomura attacks Kai back back in. Kai kicks to the back of Yoshitatsu. Kai, also a former World Junior Heavyweight Champion, two times over if I remember correctly. While he was a signed All Japan wrestler, also former World Tag Team part World Tag Team Champion as well. Kai with a kick to the back of Yoshitatsu now. Kai managing to keep his control over this match. Going for the meteor impact. Yoshitatsu slides back over. Manages to subdue Kai. Kai manages to get out. Oh! Kai caught in the face with a spinning heel kick. Kai trying to catch his breath now. Each wrestler tags out to their partner, Hino and Nomura. And now, Hino misses a lariat. Nomura with some elbow strikes laying into Hino. Nomura sends him into the corner. Tries to hit him full head of steam and hits him with a running elbow shot to the face. Nomura now trying for the Northern Light suplex. Hino just looking like this is a joke. Hino not taking Nomura very seriously and just laying into him with shots. Hard chops across the chest now. Hino's going to run the ropes. Nomura denies him. Elbow strike to the face. Nomura gets the Northern Light suplex. Broken up now. Kai cuts off Tatsu. Yoshitatsu. Hino looking like he's going to put away Nomura with the FU bomb. And is down. He manages to put him away. I think he's probably going to get the three count. Yeah. And it's a three count. 
Hino manages to pick up the win. Pick up some steam for the championship carnival. Champions carnival, excuse me. Ty manages to get over, check up on his partner. Tatsu and Hino looking strong, but could they meet in the tournament? Yoshi Tatsu, Mr. We Can Do It. Of course, spent time in NXT and in WWE. Hino will be seeing a lot more. We'll be seeing a lot more in All Japan for the next few weeks. Although I have a feeling he might be around longer than that. You know, had been rumored to go into All Japan after a while, but showed up in Wrestle 1 instead. Yoshitatsu giving the fans some love before he gets out. I want to thank you all again for listening to this live English commentary for the All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. Super stoked to uh, give this a shot and try to uh, put some English commentary to the matches and kind of give some uh, insight as to uh, what's going on with Modern All Japan. And there's Kazuyuki Fujita, former Pride heavyweight, joined by one of his besties, Kendo Kashin. Misted by Kendo Kashin and Nozara Rongai, who are all a part of the Hakagure IGF or the uh, Wandering IGF. This event was crucial, though, in reuniting Suwama and Hikaru Sato to form Evolution and Yusuke Okada into basically moving from young lion to having a role in the company now as the uh we'll say the fall man but still he's a part of evolution alongside hikaru sato and outsi atsushi aoki and so things have moved in motion and although sato was reluctant to get in at first he found his way over to the Found his way over to, uh, back over to uh, all Japan. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I, I got interrupted with something. My apologies. And so we get this six-man tab coming up. Um, IGF forces Fujita, Rongai, and Kashin versus Suwama, Okada, and Sato. Fujita is, uh, has been teased to be appearing in All Japan for almost the last two years. Uh, he had made an appearance once upon a time, uh, but he did not follow through upon it. And so when he showed up uh, last month, it was a big shock. And so this is uh, a match that has been a long time coming to some of those uh, big Suama fans like myself out there. And so uh, I'm looking forward to a big blockbuster Basically, uh, I want to see a, a, a stiff match between uh, Suwama and Fujita, and I think we're going to get that tonight. My man Suwama, the icon of All Japan Pro Wrestling, of course. Kento is the ace, but you need to have a, a firm foundation, and that is, of course, Suwama. And first comes out, first comes the IGF forces. Fujita, Nozawa, Kashin, and somebody. It's Freddy Krueger. It's Freddy Krueger with a table. Now, this is uh, this is something really bizarre because uh, these guys are supposed to be like uh, Anoki disciples. And uh, I'm pretty sure Freddy Krueger was a, uh, yeah, he was a wing guy. And if you're not familiar with wing, well, I highly encourage you to go look up some matches. But, um... If you're uh, faint for the or the weak at heart, you you might want to 
have somebody there with you because it, it gets a little violent. Uh, I believe Ghetto got power bombed into uh, some fire. Yeah, that was that was nice to watch. And out comes the Evolution forces defending all Japan from the scum that is these shoot style Inoki themed wrestlers their marauders coming in and trying to invade caution has a lot of history though in all Japan caution jumped along with uh, Mudo and Kojima in 2002 and basically made waves on upon uh, upon the the impact of uh, all Japan uh, the first one of the first things he did was he managed to have a uh, press conference at the All Japan Dojo while wearing New Japan uh, training outfits alongside uh, Hiroshi Hase to kind of give the middle finger to Inoki. Later on, uh, Kashin will have a lot of success as junior heavyweight champion, even eventually managing to win the world tag team titles with Yuji Nagata. Uh, Kashin would refuse to give back his world tag team titles, though, and created all kinds of legal problems between himself and All Japan. It's only a couple of years back by Junakayama's invitation that Kashin would come back, and he's been sporadically coming back ever since. But now he's here with Fujita and Nozawa, and apparently Freddy Krueger, to make his stand against Evolution. Supposedly Shinya Aoki is here tonight. Could that be the guy who is the, in the Fujita mask? I am not sure, but... This match has been a long time coming, at least between a confrontation between Fujita and Suwama. Fujita not even in wrestling gear. He doesn't seem to be taking this very seriously. This could come back to bite Fujita in the ass, but we will see. Fujita says he wants to start off the match. Suwama will start off. Fujita and Suwama, two of the most well-known heavyweight wrestlers in the last 20 years of all pro wrestling. Fujita, of course, a multiple-time IWGP heavyweight champion. Suwama, multiple-time triple crown champion. Jockeying for position, but it's pretty clear that Fujita knows his way around the ring. But so does Suwama. Fujita tagging in Nozawa now. Suwama tagging in Young Okada. Okada only being an Evolution member for the past couple of weeks. But automatically, his, his gamble to join Evolution has paid off. He received his first win just last month. Over Keiichi Sato. One, two. Okada climbs the top rope now. He's clipped by... A... Oh, he manages to get the, the drop kick off on, on Nozawa. He gets a two count. Okada goes after Fujita trying to cut off Nozawa's reinforcements, but it's futile efforts. Nozawa just sending out Okada now and just pummeling his face with kicks. Fujita and Suwama just trading elbow shots on the ring apron. And it looks like Sato and Kashin are singled out fighting each other. Suwama and Fujita trade shots back forth. Suwama has no love loss for shoot style wrestlers. Suwama has made it very clear he does not think much of them and is a pure believer in pro wrestling. Nozawa using a table now. He's going to put Sato and try to see if he can get him through it. Suwama being sent into the ring railing. 
Sato put through the table now. Nozawa kicking Okada right in the face, but Okada not backing down. Nozawa with the count. He only gets a two. The evolution forces seem like they're getting handed their ass to them. Nozawa just stepping all over the face of Okada, just showing him no respect. Now choking him in the throat. The referee's getting in there, trying to break him with the five count. Nozawa obviously breaking the five count now. Nozawa, of course, no stranger to All Japan, former All Asian Tag Team Champion. Twice over, I believe. Kicks, stiff kicks to the back of Okada. Punishing Okada. Nozawa with a two count. Nozawa also spent a good amount of years in All Japan. And also alongside Minoru Suzuki and Gurentai. With Tai Okea, Yoshihiro Takayama. And of course, Mazada. Fujita trying to distract the referee and push his efforts away. Wakashin, Fujita, and Ozawa triple team in the boost of the face now to the rookie Okada. Fujita just showing no regard for Okada, body slamming him like he was a sack of potatoes. Fujita with the the knee to the stomach. Almost got a three count. But Okada's spirit keeps him there. Keeps him from getting counted out in the three. Fujita is just showing no respect to Suwama. Taking out his aggression on Okada now. Caution tags in. European uppercuts. One of his trademarks, of course. I would imagine at any given time, we're probably going to see some kind of uh, arm bar, cross arm breaker from Kendo Caution. A kick to the groin now to Okada. Caution with those European uppercuts. Okada wrenching the arm, getting his arm wrenched by Caution with the aid of the ropes. Referee is totally blind to this, being distracted now. Nozawa tags in. He's now punching away at Okada. Nozawa now with a, he attempts a vertical suplex. Okada holding him at bay. Okada met, trying to reverse it now. Okada with the reverse and hits the vertical suplex. Okada finally getting in some offense into this match. Sato still on the ground for being put through the table. Caution now just standing over Okada. It looks like he's trying to work over the arm. Fujita uses a part of the table to smash Usuwama. And Okada with a drop kick to Caution. Hanging in there. Caution managing, however, to tag in Fujita. Okada trying to tag in, but he doesn't see anybody. Suwama finally getting to the corner. Okada manages to tag in Suwama. Suwama and Fujita meet in the middle of the ring, and Suwama is angry as a bee's nest. <laughs> Hornet's nest. There we go. Thank you. Big boot and a drop kick from Suwama. Very nice. Suwama does not do drop kicks that often, but that's Damn beautiful. Suwama starting to finally get some offense mixing up in the ring now. Is he going to try for the last ride? No. He's cut off by Nozawa and Kashin. Suwama now. Double chops to Nozawa and Kashin to get them down. And big lariats from both. 
Suwama in the corner. Larry at Fujino on the other. Big belly to belly suplex now. Suwama with the two count. Kashi comes in with the chair. Kashin came in with the chair and broke up that pin. Suwama looks like he got a little dinged up from that chair. He's slow to get up, but Fujita is not so slow to get up. This could be bad for Evolution. Fujita now with kicks to the stomach. Big body, bo big body shots now. Suwama, Fujita trading shots now. Fujita with a stomp to the gut. Fujita trying for a vertical suplex. Suwama reverses it for a suplex of his own. Suwama not having any of that with Fujita. Okada gets in. Nozawa's tagged in. Okada with the elbow shots to Nozawa. Okada with the running elbow forearm to the face. Another forearm shot. Nozawa misses with the lariat. Running elbow from Okada. Caution manages to break up the count at two. Okada goes after Caution now. Manages to cut off Caution, but his elbow shots are nothing to Fujita. Fujita being used to being beaten up by bigger guys. And Sato comes in and manages to take... Manages to take Sato off the apron. Manages to take Fujita off, or Kashin off the, the apron now. Okada with head full of steam, running with the elbow shot to the face of Nozawa. Suama with the lariat. Okada gets in, or Sato gets denied with a kick to the face. O uh, Sato with the uh, running into Giri to Nozawa. Suama with a backdrop now. Okada with a big body splash. But Fujita breaks it up and brings in a chair. Suwama's trying to cut him off. Suwama, Suwama manages to get a hold of the chair. Chair shot to Fujita. But Fujita does not look like it even hurts. He legit hits. They're hitting each other legit hard away with elbows now. These are. Yeah, they're, they're mixing it up now with full on sh elbow shots and strikes to the face. Fujita with a kick to the stomach. Suama with a body drop while he was being headlocked by Fujita. Suama misses with the lariat. Now he's being put to sleep by Fujita. Fujita's got it locked in pretty good. Suama's got to fight out if he wants a chance at getting over to a tag. Nozawa has got Okada clutched in. And he's being broken up by the referee. And apparently... Apparently, it is... From what... It looks like Nozawa managed to tap out Okada. And that Suwama and Fujita were not the legal man. This might have been a DQ. It's hard to tell. It looks like Freddy Cougar has some kind of... I don't even know what that is. Is that a candy or an ice cream? I, I do not... I can't tell what that is. But Freddy Cougar is trying to lodge it into Suama's mouth now. The IGF team celebrating, cheersing, cheering with beers, pouring them over Suama. Suwama drenched in beer and disgraced in the ring, or er, rolling out to the ring, rolling out of the ring, excuse me, while the IGF forces celebrate, the fans are not happy with this. Nozawa comes away looking like a million bucks, and Freddy, of course. The King of Nightmares.
Wonder if they were drinking the King of Beers. Hopefully they have better taste than that. Suwama now distraught at the result of this match. But I could imagine that this is far from over. And this is just a, merely a battle and a war that is going to scale for some time now. Evolution knows what it's like to be down, but they are not out. I would guarantee that. We are going to pause for a quick 30 second break. I hope you guys don't mind. I will be right back. Uh, this will be running and uh, in the live cast when I uh, have it streamed out, it will be uh, fixed up by then. So, yeah. Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, I I just basically got tail win, uh, the tail part of... Uh, I think that was Jake Lee coming back out. That's awesome. I hope he gets to come back soon. Jake Lee, very talented member of the All Japan Heavyweight Division. Uh, former World Tag Team Champion uh, on his way out. Uh, he got injured in a, a tag title defense alongside his tag partner, Naoya, Naoya Nomura. And uh, hoping for a speedy recovery for him. Uh, next stream, of course, is the stable that they are part of alongside Kento Miyahara. And I guess uh, technically right now, Yoshitatsu um, is taking the spot of Jake Lee, who would normally be in for, um, well, for Naoya. Uh, uh, let me let me re let me go back. Uh, Naoya Nomura was teaming with Yuma Aoyagi. And they were all Asian tag team champions together. And before that, Naoya Nomura was tagging with Jake Lee. They were world tag team champions. And then Jake got hurt. And so, uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Kaya Nomura got together. And uh, they made a team. And that team did not, pe did not work out too well. And so... Uh, they have since moved on from each other, and uh, I guess right now Nomura is just teaming with uh, whoever uh, until either Lee or uh, Aoyagi comes back. Uh, I would put a venture 
I would venture a guess that it's probably a six month window, uh, maybe less. Uh, I'm I, I'm not familiar with Ayoyagi's injury, but I would have to say that it's probably good to rest him up before putting him back out there because he is going to be somebody that is going to be very detrimental to uh, All Japan's youth movement. He's a very good wrestler. He's probably one of the best they have. And uh, there's been a lot of emphasis on him in New Japan um, for the Lionsgate shows. And he has had some matches with Yuji Nagata. And so it is uh, it is something that I think a lot of people want to see. And so it's only a matter of time. It just needs to have the right people uh, give the go-ahead to this guy because he's great. Uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling TV uh, has been on for the past uh, couple of days. And it's really awesome. Uh, they have the Champions Carnival from last year. They also have uh, some matches from the... Uh, Ro the King's Road Cup from last year as well. The one that uh, enabled the tournament that Joe Doing won that enabled him to challenge for the Chipple Crown uh, back last year against Suwama. And so uh, you get to see that as of right now. They they did upload matches from the 321 show uh, that was uh, just a couple of days ago. And um, I got to see it was a tag match between uh, Joe Doing and Kai. Uh, along, uh, they were wrestling a, uh, jeez, <laughs> uh, they were wrestling, oh my goodness, um, long story short, uh, it was the main event of 321, and it was a very good match, it was a little clipped, but, um, it was a, it was still a very good match, uh, I believe Joe was in there too, well, sorry, Joe and Kai, yeah, yes, yes, so, anyways, I hope you guys have had a really good, uh, experience with, uh, All Japan TV, uh, I have myself. It runs very well. The streaming service is excellent. Um, they had an English language option, so that was dope, and it was right from the start. And um, they are the cheapest. They are one of the cheapest internet uh, streaming services for wrestling out right now. They're at nine dollars American, or is it eight? I can't remember. But either way, it's still a really good bargain. Uh, a lot of live shows that are going to be coming up. Champions Carnival. They were just showing the lineup for the Champions Carnival. So if you give me just a second, I will pull up who will be in the A and B blocks of the Champions Carnival coming up. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to talk a little bit about All Japan right now. And um, I think they've got a lot of momentum going in that they have the streaming service. They have the Champions Carnival coming up. And um, more importantly, they're going to have their big show coming up in uh, July. I keep forgetting where the venue is going to be at. But um, I am very stoked for it because I think they're going to try to come out with all guns blazing and try to just hit it with all they got. Um, I'm kind of hoping for um, some more New Japan participation, but that's just wishful, you know. It's wishful thinking. It it's there's no problem with that, um, but I do think that New J I think that All Japan is expanding in lots of ways, and it's only a matter of time before uh, I think a lot of people are exposed to it that want to see it that want a good alternative for All Japan or for New Japan. Um, there have been some sensibilities that have been conveyed to me that New Japan. Uh, their booking has kind of changed to kind of fit a, a, a sentimentality, if you will. Um, and that is not seen in All Japan Pro Wrestling. We have uh, we have a, a, a booking we have a booking system that is not swayed by Western views and uh, Western uh, sensibilities. The Jun Akiyama and the All Japan crew, they want to do what they want to do. And that's why we watch them. And that's why we support them. And so please, for the love of God, support them. Just show them that we, we love them. We want them to just keep doing what they're doing and nothing else. So, uh, Champions Carnival. Uh, that will be starting next month. And the participants for the A Block will be Naoya Nomura, who I just talked about. Yuji Hino, who was, uh, just wrestled in the match earlier. Uh, Shingo Takagi from Dragon Gate, really excited to see him in there. Kento Miyahara, the ace, right? Joe Doring, Killer Joe. Uh, Shuji Ishikawa, one half of Violence Giants. Dioji Sai from Land's End, the 
Asian heavyweight champion and the bodyguard, uh, who is actually the guy who uh, Sai beat uh, in order to get through to become the Asian uh, heavyweight champion. Uh, on B block, we have Dylan James, who formerly wrestled in wrestled wrestled in zero one as James Rydeen. He is a Dudley's uh, 3D Wrestling Academy trainee. Uh, Kai, of course, returns for another champion carnival. Uh, Zeus as well. Uh, I'm actually really pulling for Zeus. He's my dark horse to win it all. Uh, the returning, you know, the the returning uh, Supernova, uh, Naomichi Marufuji. Suama, of course, my personal favorite guy in all Japan. Uh, Jun Akiyama, Yoshitatsu, and uh, the pink giant, uh, Yutaka Yoshi. That is who forms up the Champions Carnival for this year's tournament. Um, if I had to go with picks right now, this very second, um, I would say Zeus will probably take B block. And if I had to put a guess, I would say... Shuji Ishikawa is probably going to win the A block. If not Shuji, then uh, probably uh, Shingo. And Zeus will pull out a win out of nowhere. And he will go on to challenge uh, Joe in July and win the Triple Crown. Uh, this is not a... Uh, how do I put it? This is purely based on a bias, but I've also looked at this from different views. And uh, while a lot of people, I, I do feel that he is a big component of the tag division. I think that it's a healthy risk to put him as a singles champ, to, to give him a singles run because he's he's a big guy. He's very talented. And I think you got to give him his due. I mean, even if you gave him a, a, a triple crown win and you gave him a title defense and then he lost it on the next one, it wouldn't be the worst thing because at least he held the triple crown. You're not lower. You're not cheapening it by giving the guy, you know, uh, maybe a month or two with the title. You know, but he totally deserves to be kept in that upper echelon of uh, singles competition as far as heavyweights are concerned in uh, all Japan. Um, a couple of other things to think about is that um, Akayama and Marufuji are, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Marufuji and Akayama are in the same block, and it was Marufuji who upended Akayama to take the GHC. Heavyweight title. The GHC heavyweight title, of course, the Pro Wrestling Noah title, the top title over in Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, Akayama, a pretty selfless booker, decided that uh, he did not mind losing to uh, Marufuji. And uh, he also did not mind putting over, uh, <laughs> uh, I hate saying it, Yoshinari Ogawa uh, for the GHC heavyweight title. Uh, Akayama, a very selfless booker. Um, I would say that, uh, he's probably a modern name, Hiroshi Hase. Um, but that kind of makes sense considering that Hase had a lot of, of uh, input into Akayama's early career and, uh, just, uh, over the years just had a lot of influence in him. In fact, uh, one of the best tag matches that you'll ever see with June is, uh, June Akayama and Yuji Nagata versus Hiroshi Hase. And uh, Keiji Muto uh, in New Japan, I believe it's 2001, the end of 2001, and it's fantastic match, just dynamite match. But um, yeah, so um, I would say that uh, Zeus is, if, as far as I can tell, he's the guy heading out to you know basically become the guy. Um, as far as Kento, Kento, I feel has done a great job establishing his legacy and he will keep it up but i feel that uh he would be best served as a tag team champion along with yoshitatsu and creating new tag teams to go and chase those guys for the tag belts uh and then as soon as that ends you can have kento kind of get back towards you know winning the triple crown sort of like suama does is he kind of uh takes emphasis on uh winning the triple crown here and there and then sometimes like right now he just he doesn't care about titles he just wants to go and gets his hand on uh fujita and after tonight i can't say i blame him so um uh, the uh the rest of the card here is uh it's pretty damn stacked i i'm really enjoying the show so far um i would say that my picks for the next three i'm sorry the next four matches 
I would have to go with um, Team Exploder going over Wild Child. As much as I love Wild Child, which is uh, the tag team name for Omori and Nakanishi, um, I would have to say the Exploders, they're, they're probably going to stick around as tag team champions, at least for another month or two. Uh, Aoki versus Kondo. Uh, I'm kind of split on this. I'm a big uh, Kondo fan, or I was. And I like Aoki a lot. I love Aoki, actually. But um, for some reason, I, I just see Kondo losing. Or, I'm sorry. I see Kondo winning the title off of Aoki. I, I'd rather not. I'd rather Aoki hold on to it for a little longer. But, um, well, um, you know, it is what it is. So, I, I kind of feel that uh, we're going to see a new champion. A new World Junior Heavyweight Champion tonight. Um the tag team title match, I would say Zeus and the Bodyguard, a.k.a. Osaka Big Guns, are probably going to walk out of there with their belts and their reins intact. Um, Sai and James don't really have that much of a chemistry. That's a new team. Uh, Sai is the Asian heavyweight champion. I do not negate that, but uh, James is still new to the game, uh, to being in All Japan at least, and so I don't think that they're going to come through and as far as tonight's main event is concerned, I would still say that Joe is the, uh, he's the man. He's going to go and take Miyahara's head off with uh, Lariat and pick him up and hit him with the Revolution Bomb. But I could be wrong. So we will find out <clears throat> very, very soon. <laughs> but I want to thank you guys again for staying with me and uh, listening to the live cast. And uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, participating into the fan group. And I appreciate you guys uh, talking a little bit about yourselves and telling, uh, you know, everybody else about, you know, the things in All Japan that you really enjoy. Because uh, it, you know, when you come to uh, something uh, like a hobby, it, it kind of tends to be something that you enjoy explaining at great lengths because it's a passion in your life and some people don't necessarily get that but luckily for us uh, in the group we're, we're all relatively you know in the same boat you know we're all into Pudesu, uh and some of us are more into like classic all japan you know like you really like your, your dory funks your uh abdul the butcher you like your chic you know you like your russia kimura coming in you know the iwe and you know uh uh Ashirahara and all those guys and there's some people that like you know when uh, Choshu invaded you know with his forces and uh, some people like uh, right around the time the Triple Crown got put together and the Double Cup World Tag Team titles got put together and then you know then you have your classics classics which is more what people talk about these days which is your you know uh, let's say very late 80s to late 90s your uh Terry, uh, your, um, Terry Gordy, your Steve Williams, your Misawa, Kawada, Kobashi, uh, Fuji, you know, Suruta still putting out a couple of great matches up until the mid nineties. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of different wrestlers out there, uh, that, uh, we all identify with, we all love. And so it's awesome that you guys want to come on the site and share your love about that. So I want to thank you guys for that. And, uh, I guess the the feed still uh, they're like you know we're they're on a commercial break or something I don't know <laughs> but um, yeah so um, I'll talk a little more about the uh, the group um, I was inspired uh, just basically because I had hoped something like the streaming service was going to come on uh, within a relative time and uh, I've always been a big all Japan guy uh, all the way from uh, Ten, all the way from Tenryu, all the way to uh, you know the Mudo, the when Mudo came over, and then when Mudo left, and uh, when Akayama came over, and uh, he took the books back, and you know restructured all Japan into what we have now, and um, I have been into Japanese pro wrestling for a very long time. Um, New Japan, I I was exposed to more of first because of uh, Muda and Liger and, uh, you know, just being really big into those guys and then uh, getting older and getting to see uh, 
modern uh, deathmatch stuff like FMW and ECW, and then hearing that Tenryu you did uh, some work in FMW kind of piqued my interest, and then I started watching him, and he became one of my favorite heavyweight wrestlers of all time, and uh, he's the inspiration for my heavy my favorite heavyweight wrestler of all Japan of all time, which is uh, Toshiaki Kawada. And uh, I know a lot of you out there are Kawada fans, and uh, with good right. I mean, the guy was an incredible seller, and he could really kick some ass, and he <laughs> was missing his two front teeth, and so he looked like a damn vampire. And he's just, he's very just like, uh, you know, when you stack him up against Tawe and Kobashi and uh, uh, Misawa, he's very, very different. You know, he relies solely on his, his kicks and, uh, you know, some suplexes, a lot of backdrops, uh, a lot of brain busters, and uh, really, really just liked him. I still prefer him over the other three pillars to this day. And, uh, you know, there's some people that are big Misawa fans, and, you know, that's totally cool. I can respect that. But uh, I think for me, Kawada is, like, the guy. So, Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take another 30 second break. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm going to be right back. I just need to stretch my legs a little bit, have a, a little drinky poo. Uh, I'm still here with you guys. Uh, I'll be back as soon as the feed jumps back on. But um, I would like to uh, give one more note, which is that um, if you didn't hear me mention it before, if you guys are listening to this, you guys listen to this. Uh, and you're going to the Strong Style Evolve show in LA, or sorry, in Long Beach. Uh, they're going to have a meetup at a, uh, a location. Uh, you can talk to me or uh, one of the other guys in the group. And it's going to be after the show. And they're having raffles. And their raffle proceeds are going towards uh, Takayama Mania. Uh, Yoshihiro Takayama. I don't know if you guys know about what's going on with Yoshihiro Takayama, but. Uh, I'll say it again, is he suffered a really serious injury at the at a DDT show. I believe it was a little within a year and a half ago or a year ago, something like that. And uh, he's in pretty bad shape, and he's accrued quite a bit of, uh, uh, of uh, medical fees and things of that nature. And so uh, people uh, from uh, Nozawa Rongai to uh, Minoto Suzuki have... Uh, They've basically, uh, for lack of a better term, they've, uh, they've, they've, uh, they've given themselves to this cause to want to help their friend. They've humbled themselves because they're, they're really hurt seeing their friend in bad shape and they want to help. And that's all they want to do is they, they want to help and they'll give anything to help. And so if you guys are going to the show and you guys are uh, interested in the, the raffle, uh, I would get down there. All the proceeds go towards a really good cause. Again, Takayama Mania. Uh, I would look into Takayama Mania. I'm sure you can donate if you want to. You don't even have to be going down to the Strong Style Evolves uh, after party show. Um, I would just say that if uh, Takayama is somebody who's really touched you, then I would say, you know, throw the guy some coin and uh you know help him with his medical expenses because I i'm sure it's got to be a lot um he is a uh, quadriplegic and i believe he has been in and out of icu and so it's no joke when those kind of expenses you know accrue we're, we're talking lots and lots and lots of money to care for him so uh yeah takiyama mania look into it um uh, it's awesome it's helping out for a great cause uh all of us uh japanese wrestling nerds we have a fairly good uh, knowledge of Takayama and so uh, you know uh, he's he's there's a lot of memories with Takayama there really is from uh, you know uh, leaving UWFI to joining All Japan to joining NOAA and then becoming a freelancer while technically working for NOAA and becoming uh, NWF IWGP champion doing the pride fights, uh, wrestling in different places. Uh, Takayama has been there and done that. You know, he's uh, he's somebody that definitely stands out in Japanese pro wrestling. And so uh, to see him in this shape, it's it's very, it's very it's hard. You know, I'd imagine it's got to be harder for his family. But uh, as, uh, you know, uh, his peers, 
you know, people have worked with them for years. It's got to be hard for them to see. But the the love that we show uh, the fans, you know, I think the at the the fans showing love to them is, uh, I think, what's making a difference in their lives, seeing that people really care about them. And so uh, I think that it's a great way to touch these guys' hearts and you transcend language uh, by helping people out because uh, help is a help is a, is a universal word. Everybody could use it. Everybody needs it. And um, I think that that's something that anybody from any country could do to help. Uh, well, any, anybody that can do something to help somebody should. Why not? You know? Uh, it's a small planet, if you really think about it. If we all kind of looked out for each other a little more, things might go a little smoother. But enough about that. Super, Saitama Super Arena 325, March 25th, 2018. One of the very, very first big shows that All Japan is having on All Japan TV. And you guys are listening to the live English commentary for the All Japan Worldwide fan group. Yay! Gives you a pat on the back. It's really cool to be able to do this. Um, I am Dave, your administrator. And I want to thank you guys for listening in. Even if it's uh, on a delay. It's not live. Um, you're at least, hey, I'm willing to listen to this guy while the, the, the show goes on. And I hope that I can provide a good amount of... Uh, insight and info into the current goings on for the show so here we go the show has started back up nagata akayama winning their all asian tag belts last month Nomura having to partner up with dioji sai to fill the the role in the vacancy match just so akayama and nagata could get those all asian tag belts Omori, of course, Akiyama's regular tag partner, but Omori got sidelined earlier this year and was forced basically to take off the last couple of weeks to rest his neck up. But Omori, since he is on the opposite side of Akiyama, had to go and find himself a tag partner, and he found himself his old pal, Manabu Nakanishi. Now, Nakanishi and Omori have a history as they were the 49th IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions and the 17th NWA Intercontinental Tag Team Champions in 0-1. So there is a very storied history between all four of these wrestlers as Omori spent about three years, two to three years in New Japan as a freelancer and that's how he managed to form his team with uh Sorry, Takao Mori was freelancing in Zero One, and then uh, started working with New Japan almost primarily, and and that was because of his work with Manabu Nakanishi. And so they will reunite tonight to challenge for the All Asian Tag Team Titles against Team Exploders. Nagata and Akiyama seen as peers as Nagata and Akiyama started wrestling the same year, 1992. Both have a very storied career as amateur wrestlers. Nakanishi comes out first. Nakanishi hasn't been in an All Japan ring in some time. But he is no stranger. And if memory serves me correctly, Nakanishi did compete in a chance to win an All Japan tag title i believe possibly the world tag team title but i could be mistaken either way it has been a while since manabu nakanishi has been in the all japan ring but tonight he will reform wild child alongside takao omori Nagata and Akayama got to headline the New Japan Tokyo Dome show in 2003. Nagata challenged for Akayama's 
GHC heavyweight title, but managed to fall short. Amori himself spent a short time in Noah. Had a bad experience there. Managed to find his way out of Noah within two to three years. Started wrestling for Ricky Choshu in his World Japan promotion. Then found himself in Zero One. Then found himself wrestling in New Japan as a freelancer on the part time. Till eventually he called for a semi retirement. After that, he showed back up in wrestling independent shows, even wrestling for Big Japan before he was brought back to All Japan and then signed as a full time wrestler. Amori, of course, one of the disciples of Giant Baba era All Japan Pro Wrestling. Amori. Fuchi and Akayama all three wrestlers that have been around in all Japan Lots and lots of experience in all Japan have spent the last 20 years in and out of all Japan Nagata and Akayama have teamed before, as I have mentioned multiple times. And out comes Mr. Blue Justice, my favorite New Japan Pro Wrestler, Yuji Nagata. The man is just about 50 years old. And he's still a hoss. I wish I was I could be in that kind of shape when I'm 50. And here comes Uncle June himself, Jun Akayama, one half of the All Asian Tag Team Champions and the Gaura TV Champion as well. And here he comes. This has to be at least a third or fourth all Asian tag title reign for Jun Akiyama. Has one with Takawa Mori, one with Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and now one with Yuji Nagata. Referee will be Kyohei Wada. Kyohei! The PWF declaration gets read. PWF, of course, the Pacific Wrestling Federation, which is the sanctioning body of all Japan's titles. PWF has had many presidents from Lord James Blear, Dory Funk Jr., Hiroshi Hase. And there's Nagata and Akayama handing over the all Asian tag belts. Showing the challengers. Nakajima is seconding Akiyama and Nagata. Omori and Nakanishi have a team finisher called the Washington Juku. Or the Washington Treaty, which is a low 
arm leg arm to leg lariat for Nakanishi while Omori uses his axe bomber to hit the top part of their opponent. Very few matches they did not win when they hit that. So be reminded of that. Nagata, of course, has an insanely good win-loss record in all Japan. As does Uncle June. Lots of streamers in the ring and probably going to take a second cleanup, but again, nothing wrong with uh, a little little pastime, uh, a little nostalgia, if you will. Wada makes sure all the trunks in their boots have no foreign weapons or objects. Arguably, Nagata and Akayama were the best part of the event last month at a Yokohama Twilight Blues. Their tag team title event match was off the hook. There's no other way to put it. They're a great team. You can't beat a solid team of veteran workers that really can go. And with credentials between them, it's hard to believe they didn't do this sooner. Omori and, Ak uh, and uh, Nagata starting out. They lock up. Akiyama gets to go behind. Omori manages to get some fingers, put some pressure. Akiyama, or Nagata, rolls out. Manages to reverse the momentum now. He's got Omori now. Arm twisted behind. Omori manages to swing out. Nagata swings out. Leg, body, leg scissors from Omori. And Nagata and Omori spring away from each other. Omori and Nagata lock back up after some circling around. Nagata with a headlock to Omori now. Sizable difference between Omori and Nagata, but... Nagata will fight with every last being he's got, like a samurai. Omori bounced off the ropes by Nagata. Omori with a shoulder block now. Wash face, washboard kick to the face of Omori. Slap to Omori, back to uh, Nagata. Nagata with a shot to Omori. Omori not having any of that, getting fired up. Shots to Nagata. Elbow to Omori. Slap to Nagata. European uppercut from Omori. Omori with the shoulder tackle off the ropes. Nagata is down now. Uncle June tacks in. Uncle June gets... Manabu Nakanishi, former IWGP heavyweight champion. Akiyama in the headlock bounces off Nakanishi to the ropes. Nakanishi with a shoulder tackle. Akiyama, Nakanishi trade elbows now. Nakanishi might have gotten older. And a little less muscular, but he is still a big, big man. Chop from Nakanishi now. Akayama with the headbutt to respond to that. Nakanishi with some sort of throat strike to Akayama. Don't really see Nakanishi use that too much. It's kind of interesting. Two-man shoulder tackle from Wild Child. Managed to throw off Nagata from the ring apron. Omori has control of Akayama now. Shot to the throat. It looks like Omori's trying to go for the, out, the guillotine axe driver. That could be axe guillotine driver. Oh, and a DDT under the ring apron from Akayama. Omori is down now. Akiyama on the prowl.
Nagata all over Nakanishi now. Stomps all over the Nakanishi's head. Akayama sends Omori into the pole. It's kind of messed up. That's his own tag partner. But I guess tonight that's all thrown out the window. Akayama looks like he's setting up for a knee to the head. Oh! Knee drop to the top of the head of Omori. Akayama, the master of the knee. He can use that thing pretty damn well, I have to say. Nakanishi now trying to get Wada to put some justice into this match. Some blue justice, maybe. Ha. Huh. Akayama gets back into the ring. Omori tries to go for a tag. Akayama cuts off Nakanishi. Omori gets stomped on by Akayama. Nagata tags in. Nagata starts with the assault. Kicks right to the chest to Omori. Elbow to the back of the head of Omori. Nagata cuts off his reinforcements. Wada's holding off Nakanishi while Nagata has Omori in a front neck lock, teasing, teasing Akayama, using his own submission hold. Teasing is probably the wrong word. He probably, he was uh, more like a showing tribute. And now Nagata with the Nagata lock two on Omori. Omori not too close to the ropes. Akayama cutting off Nakanishi again. Akayama and Nagata working really well as a team. Nakanishi finally gets in there to break up the hold. Nagata tags in Akayama. Nagata again cuts off Nakanishi. Nagata and Nakayama send Amori back to the ropes. Double shoulder tackle. Akayama again all over Nakanishi. Cutting him off, making sure Omori has no one to tag to. Essentially leaving him up out on his own wrestling a singles match. Or a handicap match. And pile driver to Omori. Surprised he's roughing up his own tag partner so much. But tonight's a little different. Omori has no idea where he's at right now. Is completely lost. But he's starting to slowly get his composure back. Omori, when he's fired up, can pretty much beat anybody in all Japan. And has proved it. He is a former Triple Crown heavyweight champion. Former All-Asian tag team champion. Former world tag team champion. He's done it all. And, oh! Akayama with the running knee to Omori. Right through the kisser. Wham! Right in the kisser. And another one. But at least you know he's not really angry with him because he hasn't taken down his knee pad to hit him with his knee. Straight legit. Akayama slowly picking up Omori. Omori manages to break away and stun Omo uh, Akayama with a series of chops and some... Oh, but it's not enough. Akayama just puts him right back in place. Throws him into the corner of the ring. Akiyama misses with the knee. Omori with a backdrop on Akiyama. He needs to reach out there and get that tag like right now. Tag in to Nakanishi who's not cut off to receive the tag. Nakanishi with the two arm blow to Akiyama. Cuts off Nagata giving them a taste of their own medicine. Nakanishi with a series of chops on... Akayama's chest. Nakanishi with a lariat over to the to Akayama in the corner. Nagata tries to cut him off, but Nakanishi just feeds him a lariat too. 
Another lariat for Akiyama, who's still in the corner of the ring. Nakanishi now. Vertical suplex and just releases him, not even going down with him. Nakanishi with a, a body press off of the ropes. Only gets a two count. <coughs> Nakanishi now putting him up on the torture rack. Akayama's in the torture rack. Nagata cutting off Nakanishi. Kicks to the stomach, but it's no good. Nakanishi throws Akayama onto Nagata. Pretty damn smart. I'm seeing here on the Twitter feed right now that there's a lot of people just watching All Japan for the first time. Congratulations to them. And Nakanishi launches himself onto Nagata. Not every day you get to see Nakanishi do that. Nagata and Nakanishi, of course, are the same age and generation of wrestlers in All Japan as they were the New Japan equivalents to them. To Omori and Akayama. Nakanishi got crossed on the ropes. Uncle June trying to take advantage of it. Tosses him off the top rope. Down he goes. Uncle June tags into June uh, to. Uh, Yuji Nagata now. Nagata gets in there. Kicks to his former tag team partner. Nag Nakanishi absorbing those kicks and not letting any of them phase him. Nagata bounces off the ropes for a washboard face kick and does nothing to Nakanishi. He is unfazed. Nakanishi not having any of that. Stopping the exploder. Nakanishi with a huge chop to Nagata's chest. Misses the lariat. Nagata hits a low altitude drop kick to the knee. Nakanishi with the spear. Nakanishi now with the tag to Omori. Omori gets in there. Bounces off the ropes and hits a big boot of his own. Omori, uh, Nagata staggers. Omori with a spinning heel kick of his own. Lots of history between these gentlemen. As I stated before. Nakanishi and Nagata have been tag team partners multiple times. Running, running neck drop from Omori for a two count on Nagata. Nagata and Nakanishi, two-time IWGP Tag Team Champions and also were a part of the G-Eggs unit back in New Japan. Omori going for the axe guillotine driver. Omori with knees, er, Nagata with knees to Omori's head to block it. Omori with the big boot to the face of Nagata trying to st stop him his momentum. Nagata trying to go for an exploder. Omori denies him. Amori with the axe guillotine driver. He sits down on his chest. He only gets a two count though. Uncle June running in there to make the save. Amori winding it up. Getting ready for the axe bobber. Can he put away Nagata and take home the all Asian tag belts alongside Manabu Nakanishi? Rolls it up, Nagata. He's got him. He has him in the arm lock. And if you know Nagata, it's that time for that arm lock. Channel that demon, Yuji. Channel that demon. Channel your inner dead man. Oh, Nakanishi with the chop to the chest denying Nagata. No demon today, or at least not for that long. Nagata with the tag to Akiyama. Omori hanging in there, not trying to go for the tag of Nakanishi. Akayama with the knee to Omori. Omori, face full of knee. <coughs> Only a two count. 
Nakayama with the front neck lock now, trying to beat Mr. Mixed Martial Arts. Nakanishi gets in there with the throat strikes again. Nakanishi picks up Akayama. Akayama is slow to get up. They're going for the Washington GQ now. They hit it! They hit the Washington GQ! The Washington Treaty! But Nagata's there to break up the count already! Nakanishi manages to cut off Nagata, but the damage is done. Now they're gonna try to go for the Washington GQ on Nagata! They hit it! But they are slow to go and pin their opponents. They're trying for something else. I think they might be going for Stereo Lariats. Or Omori with the Axe Bomber. And Nakanishi with the Lariat. Oh! They're both denied with Exploders. Nagata and Akiyama hit Exploders. Stereo Exploders at the same time. Akayama now with the knee to Omori. That looked really bad. Omori kicks out at just about two. More knees to the face of Omori. I hope he likes Omori knee. Knee right to the chest of Omori. Akayama gets a two count. Nakanishi gets in there for the save. Here comes Nagata for the save for his team. Akayama with the exploder now. Amori looks like he does not know where he is at, but he kicks out at two. Amori's lights are still on. Amori might be trying to go for the Rich Cuts Exploder. He hits it. This could be it right here. One, two, three. And Akayama and Nagata, the Exploders, retain the All Asian Tag Team titles. In a very, very thrilling match. Wild Child definitely gave them a run for their money. But in the end, the Exploders, they knew exactly how to deal with Wild Child. Omori and Nakanishi are still reeling, still down in the ring. But Nagata and Akayama get to celebrate tonight. Nakanishi looks out after Omori. But Akayama and Nagata, the Exploders, they managed to retain the All-Asian Tag Team titles in their very first defense. They're presented with the championship belts now. New Japan, ring seconds, trainees there for Nagata and Nakanishi. And the ch and the championship cup tournament, tournament championship cup. <laughs> Congratulations to the Exploders, Team Exploder, if you will. Want to thank you guys all again for listening to the English commentary for tonight's show. 325 Saitama Super Arena. This is Dave, your administrator for World... Oh, boy. Worldwide Fan Group. And Nagata is still in the ring with Akayama. And who comes out but his buddies, Kendo Kashin and Kazuyuki Fujita. Nagata, Kashin, and Fujita are all buddies along with Nakanishi as they were all a part of the Team Japan stable back in New Japan some years back. All trained and all roughly around and buddies at the same time. It looks like they're trying to... I, the IGF forces are trying to appeal to Nagata to come and join with them. Nagata looks a little confused as to what's going on. And there's Nakanishi 
joining with his Team Japan. Oh, and there's all of Team Japan all together once again. Having a little Steve Weiser moment. Uncle June walking away. But the Team Japan members briefly reuniting, getting back together and shaking hands. Nagata and Nakanishi even shaking hands. The New Japan wrestlers going back home. They'll get a day off as uh, the entire rest of the roster is over here in California getting ready to wrestle in about, uh, I don't know, uh, 15 hours, 16 hours, something along those lines. But for Nagata and Nakanishi, they get to go home and rest a little bit before they got to go back on the tour. Nagata with the salute to the fans, showing love, all Japan, all Japan fans. It was a true delight to see Team Japan get back together in the ring like that. Although, if you have to ask me, I think it's kind of funny that they uh, get back together in a, a All Japan ring and not a New Japan ring instead. Because uh, that's essentially their home. That's uh, a, a promotion that's more known for that style of uh, wrestling. Or the, those wrestlers kind of thrive is uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. And so, you know, it's kind of a different a different uh, situation to see them there. But all the same, they have a place there. We're seeing highlights again of Twilight, Yokohama Twilight Blues, where Aoki was stripped of his mask, but was still able to take away Tajiri's World Junior Heavyweight title. Proving that you cannot stop Aoki and his assault point. Just this past month, there was a junior tournament for All Japan, sort of the equivalent of the best of the Super Juniors tournament called the Junior Battle of Glory, in which Kondo managed to win almost all of his matches and become the tournament winner. With the right of the tournament winner, you get a shot at the World Junior Heavyweight Champion, which he already pinned during the tournament. And so Kondo is no stranger to not only being a world junior heavyweight champion but being used to winning tournaments and being the dominant junior heavyweight of the promotion and so he has a chance to do that again tonight <clears throat> in all japan pro wrestling he has been in wrestle one for the past four years now and so five i'm sorry uh, well it, it would be five it will be five years this year my apologies and Kondo managed to convincingly put away Koji Iwamoto, the Red Meteor, to win the Junior Battle of Glory. And so uh, hopefully it is a win that Iwamoto will get back in time. But for tonight, Aoki versus Kondo. Who will come out as Junior Heavyweight Champion? It's the Assault Point. Versus the King Kong Lariat. Aoki still wearing his mask. Evidently a very big fan of masked wrestlers. Growing up and always wanted to be a masked wrestler. And so that's why he is a masked wrestler now. want to thank you guys all again for listening into the All Japan Worldwide Fan Group English Commentary. Out comes Kondo. The master of the King Kong Lariat. Had one of the greatest junior heavyweight title matches in all of modern day All Japan when he took on Kaz Hayashi in 2005 or 2006, the man 
hit a perfect moonsault. And so you could clearly tell he was a Ultimo Dragon student. And out comes the champion, Atsushi Aoki. Aoki, a believe a two-time or possibly three-time heavy junior heavyweight champion, has also won multiple All Asian Tag Titles, as well as success in Noah before leaving. Aoki also the trainer in the All Japan Dojo. It really shows the last few rookies that have come out of there have been very exciting, very technically sound. Okada being a prime example of that. We have another PWF reading announcement for the title. Again, PWF set for Pacific Wrestling Federation, which is the governing body of All Japan Pro Wrestling and its titles. There's Aoki handing over the World Junior Heavyweight title to the announcer or the representative of the PWF. <clears throat> this belt, this particular World Junior Heavyweight title happens to be a newer version of the title sort of how the triple crown was modernized uh, as one belt from three and with a more modern look to it the world junior heavyweight title kind of modernized the same way all japan remains to have the oldest active wrestling title in japan that being the all asian tag team titles Kondo gets the streamers. And here comes Aoki. Not as many streamers, surprisingly. Aoki still, of course, representing Evolution. But having obligations to defend his junior heavyweight title before mixing it up with the IGF forces. Speaking of news stories, Brian Danielson, aka Daniel Bryan, made his way back to uh, WWE. He'll be able to uh, wrestle uh, sometime in the near future. If you want to see a match, like uh, an amazing wrestling match, I highly recommend you watch Aoki versus Daniels, Brian Danielson, uh, from Noah about 2006, maybe 2008. Phenomenal match, and you could totally see then that Aoki could wrestle anything. He could wrestle a baby if he wanted to. He's just that damn good. Kondo, very good wrestler. Again, probably one of the best junior heavyweights in all Japan in the last 20 years. But Aoki could outfox him with his technique. Kondo is just a beast. Kondo has some skill, but he likes to beat you up and he likes to use those maneuvers, those tech, those submission, submission maneuvers to uh, really keep you down and uh, zap your energy. Oh, and Aoki right through the ropes. High impact start to this match. Aoki rolls Kondo right back into the ring. Aoki climbs the top rope. He gets... Oh! He leapfrogs over Kondo. Kondo with a lariat. Aoki tries to get a backslide. Kondo tries to go for the cross arm breaker. No dice. Kondo had him scout.
Kondo now. Circling with Aoki. Locking hands for a test of streak now. Both hands locked. Aoki maneuvers. Jocks gets behind Kondo, but Kondo manages to get behind him. Aoki manages to tie up his arm, get into a leg hold. He's trying to bring down Kondo, but Kondo's base is pretty strong and solid. Kondo gets behind Aoki. Kondo wraps his arms around Aoki. Aoki is trying to break that grip. Aoki has managed to get his arm tied up and away from Kondo. Bending his wrist, putting him on his knees at his mercy. Kondo reversing it now. Putting Aoki's arm behind his back. Aoki with the go behind. Kondo trying to break that grip now. Kondo gets a handful of hair and he rips Aoki from his spot from behind. Reverse DDT from Kondo now. Kondo slingshotting Aoki right into the bottom rope. Getting that rope across his throat. Aoki rolls to the outside. He's trying to recover now. Kondo with elbows to Aoki now. Trying to keep him off his balance. Aoki wraps the arm around Kondo. Surprise. Oh! Aoki manages to surprise Kondo. But Kondo still not that phase. Still taking the fight to Aoki. Making sure that he knows Aoki is not going to get through this match lightly. But the damage has been done in Kondo's right arm. Which I believe is his lariat arm has been impaired. This could totally change the match right here. If Kondo's lariat arm can't hit that uh, that lariat hard enough, his own finisher might not be enough to finish Aoki, giving Aoki a shot at putting him away with a cell point or the cross arm breaker. Kondo now stalking Aoki. Elbow to the back of the head of Aoki. Aoki's still trying to get back to normal. He's still kind of rocked. It looks like Aoki is definitely not all there. Trying to fight off Kondo with weak shots. It is not working. And Kondo just is not. He just looks very, very unpleased. But Kondo gets surprised. Head, head snap takedown. He's got a headlock. A grounded headlock on Aoki now. Aoki manages to get the arm. And he's got the arm breaker now. He managed to pull away from Kondo. Kondo now. Managing to get his own submission hold in now. A variant of a Mexican stretch. Actually a variant of his old stretch muffler hold, but a grounded version. Aoki trying to fight his way out, and he does. Aoki manages to get to the rope. I did mention before that Kondo does have skill. He does not like to use it very much, but he has spent a lot of time with lots and lots of lucha holds from when he was younger. Sends over to the corner of the rope. Kondo with a lariat makes Aoki tumble to the center of the mat.
Condor with the two count. Kondo just has the biggest smile on his face. Almost like he's toying with Aoki. Swinging that breaker. Kondo definitely stepping up his game. From their last encounter. During the junior battle for glory. Junior battle of glory. Excuse me. It is almost 2 o'clock here. So you'll have to forgive me if I... Slur and stammer here and there, but uh, I will give you all of my best. Kondo now with a tombstone pile driver on Aoki slowly sinks into it, drops him down. Wada only gives him a two count. Aoki still trying to fight, not much there left though. He's been. Getting pummeled for the last few minutes. Not able to mount much on the offensive side. Aoki again with weak shots to possibly stun Kondo. I'm not sure. Kondo with big elbows to Aoki. Aoki now with some sort of jaw gonzo like maneuver but to the arm. And now Aoki's reaching the arm of Kondo. Trying to soften him up to get that arm breaker on. Working on that right arm again. That is the lariat arm of Kondo. Kondo right now just trying to go for a lariat. And his arm is still reeling from it. Adrenaline can only cover so much. Before your body will break down and give out. Aoki with a beautiful go behind. Some sort of monkey flip from a reverse position. Aoki's still on his feet. He runs the ropes. He's going to go right through the ropes and hits Kondo. He's going to go one more time. And he goes through the top rope this time. He's going one more time. Kondo does not see it coming. Aoki makes him pay. Aoki's still out of it, but he's beginning to pick up steam. His momentum is starting to shift, finally. Aoki now, feeling it. He's climbing the top rope. Beautiful dropkick to the chest of Kondo. Kondo now. Only a two count. Aoki goes right to the cross arm breaker from the pin position. Will Aoki tap? Will Aoki get Kondo to tap? He's got him right in the middle of the ring too. Now he's got him in a triangle. Aoki has him in a triangle now. Kondo does have a propensity, though, to get back on his feet and power bomb. If you've seen at least five to ten Sushi Kondo matches, you know that that is something that is always two steps away from changing the outcome of a match. Kondo still grabbing that arm, that right arm. Aoki has been working on it methodically. If he can't beat his size, he's going to have to beat him with technique. And that's what Aoki's been trying to soften up. Kondo's right arm, but Aoki, he's not, he's getting rocked. He is not all there. Kondo. With an atomic drop and a DDT combo. Kondo now with a two count. (laughs) 
Connor could be sizing him up, trying to think of how much force he has left to put in that lariat, that King Kong lariat, and take home the World Junior Heavyweight title to wrestle one. Boots to the face of Aoki. Aoki sent to the other corner. Kondo misses the lariat. Tries to roll through. Aoki with a face kick. Aoki gets to the top rope. Extremely quick. Body press from Aoki onto Kondo. He gets a two count. Aoki is beginning to feel it. Aoki runs on the ropes. Kondo. Oh! Power slam jackhammer. But Kondo's right arm is still really hindered from all that work over by Aoki. Aoki, Kondo, back up to their feet. Aoki trying with weak strikes, but Kondo still able to hit with some power elbows. Aoki with a double strike to the right arm of Kondo. He's just going to try to zero in on that right arm. He's going all in. Like a gambling man, Aoki is going to try to go all in on that right arm and submit him. Kondo fools Aoki. Kick to the right arm of Kondo from Aoki. Aoki working that arm, wrenching that arm. Oh, Aoki is now caught in a sleeper, but it's with a bad arm. Aoki with a backdrop now on the Kondo. Aoki slowly getting back up, but Kondo with a backdrop of his own. Telling Aoki, I am still here. Kondo now going for the King Kong Lariat. German suplex from Aoki. Drop kick right to the face of Kondo. Kondo trying again for the Lariat. Aoki with the shoulder block. Kondo with the King Kong Lariat. Kondo wants that World Junior Heavyweight title so bad he can taste it now. I think he's able to look past his arm injury and let that adrenaline flow into him and finish off Aoki with one big lariat after he hits the spear. Kondo blocks the spear. He's got him locked. But it looks like Kondo managed to get his hand out of the oh Kondo managed to get a pinning combination on Aoki while he was in an arm bar Aoki now tries for the seated drop kick Kondo with a sleeper he's got a choke sleeper right in the middle of the ring now but Aoki is not the one with the bad arm it's Kondo so there's not much pressure being put on there. Aoki still managing to fade away, but there's fight left in Aoki. Kondo right on top of him with the sleeper, but it does not look like there's much pressure put on that chokehold. Aoki standing up now. Walks Kondo right back into a corner. Kondo with the spear! Tries to get a three count, but only gets a two. Kondo picks up Aoki now. Wow. Gut wrench into a pile driver from Kondo. But it doesn't put away Aoki.
Kona now rolling Aoki to the apron. Kondo signaling for the end. It's a bulldog right into the, the railing. Right in front of the announcers. Aoki got bulldog right into the railing on the outside. Kondo pins him. Only gets a one count. <coughs> Kondo does not know what to do. He is going vertical suplex. Aoki stands right back up, but he is hurt. Kondo with another vertical suplex. Kondo gets back up. He will not go down. Kondo is the King Kong Lariat. He kicks out at two. Kondo is feeling it though. I think his adrenaline's gonna run right through him and he's gonna ignore that arm. He's going for a second King Kong. Aoki counters! Aoki counters! He's got the cross on board right in the middle of the ring. He's got the arm scissors now. Aoki's got the assault point. Kondo's trying to get his feet over to the ropes. He can't get anywhere. He's right in the middle. Aoki wins. Aoki wins. Aoki is a soul point and he trapped Kondo. There was nowhere for him to go. Kondo had to give up. He couldn't even tap out. Aoki wins. Aoki retains. Aoki retains and defense one. Kondo looked like he had Aoki's number the entire match, but Aoki managed to cash in his last chips. He gambled it away on the right arm of Kondo, and he managed to win on that gamble. Kondo is going back to Wrestle 1 with just his pride and the Junior Gloria Battle Tournament 1. He will not walk away with the World Junior Heavyweight title. Aoki's arm is raised. Congratulations to him. He is still the world junior heavyweight champion. Congrats to, to, congrats to Atsushi Aoki for retaining... Aoki still looks like his lights are still kind of out of it. But nonetheless, he was still able to win with the assault point. And hold on to that World Junior Heavyweight title. Just checking right now, and according to according to uh, my sources, uh, Aoki is a three-time World Junior Heavyweight Champion. Congratulations to him. Aoki has had a very storied career, has wrestled in a lot of different promotions. Has wrestled in New Japan, All Japan, NOAA. Uh, I believe he's wrestled a little bit and uh, possibly some uh, hard hit and some other uh, possibly more shoot style, uh, submission style, catch his can style wrestling, specialty indies uh, as uh, Aoki is a really big fan of those. It's probably why him and Sato are still friends and tag partners even with the, the, the split up of Evolution. They came back together but they were still tagging together. 
while uh, Sato was not a member of Evolution is because uh, Aoki, I would imagine, has some kind of resonance with Sato, who is a submission style, uh, submission wrestling style uh, type of wrestler. The hentai, Hikaru Sato, but no. Aoshi, Azuzi Aoki walks away with the World Junior Heavyweight title. Congrats to him. I really thought that Kondo would have his number, but he did not. Osaka Big Guns. Up against Lands In and Dylan Baker, formerly known as James Rydine. Baker pinned Bodyguard about a week ago, or possibly two, I think it was about a week ago. Pinned him in under five minutes. And that's not an easy accomplishment because uh, the bodyguard is quite a large fellow and uh, he can beat you up. And so for Dylan Baker to manhandle him like that was uh, very impressive. But needless to say, Osaka Big Guns, they are probably the most dominant tag team in all of Japan and have been for the last two and a half years, maybe three. And so it would not surprise me if they stay the most ta dominant tag team in all of Japan. So if they win tonight, I will not be surprised. But it will be interesting to see what Dylan Baker produces. And it will be interesting to see what Sai produces in a championship match situation. Sai, of course, did challenge for the All-Asian Tag Titles last month alongside Naoya no no Nomura of Nick Stream. They came up short, but that was not on any part of Sai's responsibility. And here comes Sai and Baker right now. Sai coming out with the Asian heavyweight title. Here comes Baker with his skin. Ryuji Sai is a former world heavyweight champion over in Zero One. Also a former Intercontinental, NWA Intercontinental tag team champion. Spent a good chunk of his career in Zero One. Came in in around 2013 and started wrestling primarily in All Japan Pro Wrestling. With the intent of spreading out the brand of Land's End. And now is the all Asian heavyweight champion. Which Lands in helped sponsor alongside All Japan. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I believe uh, Sai beat the bodyguard to become the first uh, All Japan, or sorry, the first all Asian heavyweight champion in over. Uh, IG, I don't know, uh, 37 years, something along those lines. So, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And out comes the bodyguard and his young ward, the badass Zeus himself. Zeus and bodyguard themselves are entering into their fourth tag title reign as All Japan World Tag Team Champions, I believe. Three time, my apologies. My apologies. Three time world tag team champion. Been curious about that tattoo on the bodyguard's chest for a long time on why he has dead or alive. He might be a big uh, Bon Jovi fan, I'm not too sure, but. Uh, Either way, those are two big guys I would not want to insult or offend in any way, shape, or form because uh, they'd probably beat the living hell out of me. But Zeus seems like a pretty nice guy. Well, let's face it. Bodyguard's a pretty nice guy. You've seen him karaoke. How could somebody that mean have a soul that would let somebody sing like that? That, that guy sings like an angel. I've seen it. But in the ring... Some bad mofos. Bodyguard doing a little Big E action there. Shaking his rump. P 
PWF announcement being read. Nikan Lee, your referee. Zeus and Bodyguard, formerly Osaka Pro Wrestlers, just like um, just like uh, uh, Nakajima, Yohei Nakajima. Well, Nakajima is a uh, Okinawa Pro Wrestler, but trained by Super Delphin, who is the guy who created Osaka Pro Wrestling. And uh, if I remember correctly, Atsushi Aoki is, uh, sorry, Atsushi Maruyama is Tiger's Mask, who is also a Osaka Pro Wrestler. Pro Wrestling Noah also has a good talent amount of talent from Osaka Pro Wrestling, but 2001, let's say 2000, let's say 1999 to about 2008, that's the promotion you want to check out. There's lots of great talent. Bodyguard, Zeus, Tiger's Mask, Super Delphin, Takahiro Murahama, Magma, Big Boss Magma. Magnitude Kishwada, a lot of great workers there. Dylan Baker, of course, former All Japan, has worked in Real World Tag League a couple years back alongside Maybach Beta. Bodyguard, he seriously has a great, I, I love his look with the shortcut hair and the beard that connects with the mustache. And then Zeus, of course. Zanichi wrestler. Not many people know that. There's a good amount of Korean descended Japanese pro wrestlers. Sai being one of them. Seuss being another. Koji, Kon Koji Kanimoto being another too. Japan has uh, some multi-ethnic action in there. It's very small, but they do. Sai evidently comes from a family that has a, a very well-known restaurant. Parents were able to pay for him to go to school in England in uh the sidmouth academy if i remember correctly and that's why the name of his uh, finisher is the sidmouth because uh size a really big uh, anglo anglophile if you will zeus is going to start this one out along with dylan baker baker goes for the handshake zeus i don't wow zeus had it all right hey good on zeus zeus having some uh competitive spirit Zeus and Baker now circling each other. Baker trying to show how much taller he is than Zeus. Locking up for a test of strength. Baker trying to over Zeus, overpower Zeus. Zeus not having any of that. Zeus showing Baker... He's as big and nasty as Baker can be. Zeus giving underpowered. Getting overwhelmed here, though. Dylan Baker's just a massive wall of a man. Baker and Sai, of course, both former world heavyweight champions in 0-1. Zeus putting Baker on his knees. The two big men. Zeus with the knee to the gut. Locking up Baker with the headlock. Zeus grounding that headlock. Making sure Baker doesn't go anywhere. But Baker standing right back up. Bounces Zeus off the ropes. Nothing. Baker into Zeus. Baker says, come on, Zeus. I know you can hit me with harder. 
Zeus with a monster chop to Baker. Baker making his pecs dance. Says, let you, let me entertain you with one of mine. Yes, I'm a Robbie Williams fan. Baker says, what's up? And says, is that all you've got? Baker, shoulder tackle. Here comes Zeus now. Zeus now showing Baker just how much power he's got. Zeus getting tagged in by the bodyguard. Psy gets in. Psy now trying for a triangle. Trying to get the triangle on bodyguard. The former Gerard Godot student. Baker now has Zeus stretching him out. Sai, I think, has that triangle on, but it's kind of hard to tell from the position. Bodyguard definitely looks like he's struggling to breathe there. Bodyguard looks like he's picking up Sai for... Oh, he's got him powerbomb. Zeus managed to shake off Baker, too. Zeus actually shook off Baker first. Zeus and Bodyguard with the overhead gorilla slams. They don't call them Osaka big guns for nothing, guys. And gals. Osaka big guns now go to the outside. Take the chase over to the challengers. Zeus slings Baker right into the railings. Baker gets a nice kiss on the railings. Sai now. Thrown into the railings by bodyguard. Body Zeus with a vertical suplex to the outside on Baker. Bodyguard to to, to Sai. Making him kiss that railing. Masakato out there. Acting as ring second for the Lands In team. It looks like Okada's ring seconding for Osaka Big Guns. Nikan Lee gives him a two count. Side Wint is in pain, but he's still in the match. Big body slam by bodyguard. Osaka Big Guns, big shoulder tackle on side. Managed to cut off Baker to make sure he won't interfere with the count. Nikan lead, still only a two count. Zeus now with a choke sleeper on Psy. Psy reaching out for the ropes, but he's still a good couple of feet away from him. Psy now has his foot on the ropes, and he manages to get the broke hold. Hold broke. Zeus now standing over Psy. Starting to feel that momentum. Really shift over his side. He's been manhandling Psy for a couple minutes now. Gut wrench. He's got him lifted up. Bodyguard from the top rope. And a chop to the chest of Psy. Sends him right down to the mat. 
Side only with a two count. Bodyguard gets on top of him, trying to pin him again. Only a two count. Bodyguard getting a little frustrated now. Wanting to put away Psy and go home. Big Larius to the chest of Psy. Bodyguard just all over Psy. Bodyguard sends Psy to the corner. Psy manages to get behind Bodyguard. Bodyguard with some faint elbows to the back of the head to stop Psy. It's enough. Psy is winning in pain. Bodyguard. Psy gets to go. Oh. Psy gets a vertical suplex on Bodyguard. Psy trying to roll out and get that tag. He gets a tag to Dale and Baker. Baker with massive chops onto the chest of Bodyguard. Dead or alive, I'm pretty sure that Bodyguard will feel that. And a big short arm lariat from Baker picks Bodyguard right back up. Takes him up for a vertical suplex. Baker with a lariat and a spear from Bodyguard. Baker totally feeling that spear. When you get a guy the size of Bodyguard and he hits you with everything he's got at that speed, you're going to feel something break inside you. Zeus tagged in now. Zeus sending JK off the ropes. Baker sends Zeus. Zeus with a big elbow shot to the Baker. Zeus is up. He just gets a running full head of steam. And he nails Baker right with a lariat. He hits Baker. Bear hug front suplex. One of my favorites. He gets a cover for a two count. Baker's still in this. But Zeus is looking to hone in and finish this thing. Zeus with a choke slam. Baker with the choke. They're both choking the living lights out of each other. The daylights out of each other. They both break off each other's choke holds. Elbow shots traded between Baker and Zeus now. Lariat from Baker to Zeus. Baker tags in Psy. Psy with a big boot to Bodyguard. Or to, to Zeus. Zeus now with elbows to Psy. Zeus with another big chop to Psy. Psy with a punch right to Zeus. Zeus keeps chopping him down like he was trying to chop down a tree. And another one. God, I would not want to piss off Zeus. Not with those kind of chops. Psy answers back with kicks now. He's definitely got something for Zeus, and it's not a butt kick. It's multiple kicks right to the chest. Sends him right down. 
Sai sends him down to the mat. Sai is totally beginning to feel it now. Sai picks up Zeus for the suplex. Zeus gets two, though. Is he going to get... Zeus counters with one of his own. Zeus has not got a hold of Sai. And now he's locomotive suplexing him. He's getting him on the top rope. <laughs> and they sent him down. Osaka big guns are working on side. <coughs> now, sorry. <laughs> Sai trying to find his way out of the predicament, but he's got two of the biggest, roughest guys in Japan just wailing away on him. Bodyguard with a running lariat to the corner. Zeus follows suit. Bodyguard with another. Zeus with another. Sai is down on the ground. He's been pummeled. Bodyguard looking to zero in and put this thing away. He's got Sai with by a handful of hair now. It looks like Zeus and Sai are looking for a team up. Could they be hitting the Doomsday device? It looks like they're setting up for the old classic World Warriors. Oh! Zeus, miss, Zeus misses with the lariat. Baker with a shoulder tackle. Hits bodyguard too. Baker inside now. Double team with a vertical suplex to, to bodyguard. Bodyguard does not know where he is at. Baker cuts off Zeus. It's just Sai and Bodyguard in the ring. Bodyguard does not know where that he's at, but Sai has a very good idea of where he is. Sai. Sai has Bodyguard in the corner. Sai with a... Oh! Bodyguard meets him halfway with the lariat. Sai tries again with a kick. Bodyguard hits one of his own, though. Bodyguard is on fire. Bodyguard is on fire. Sai is down now. And the bodyguard is on fire. Zeus is ready. Bodyguard is ready. Is Saitama Super Arena ready? Choke slam by the Osaka Big Guns. Bodyguard climbing the ropes. Elbow drop. He goes for the pin. Zeus is covering. Baker manages to get through. The match continues. Osaka Big Guns trying to deal with Baker, but Baker trying to fight back. Baker with chops of his own. He's trying to hold off the big guns, but I don't think he'll last long. Nope. Shoulder blocked by Osaka Big Guns. Big Guns want to put this thing away and take their world tag belts and go home. Sai now. Being lifted up. It looks a lot like the Doomsday device. Oh, it looks like Baker manages to stop it again. Sai with a kick to the chest of the seated on the top rope. Zeus. Sai now with a superplex. 
Off the top rope. Baker now on his feet, feeling it. Bodyguard. Oh no. Choke slam the bodyguard. Dylan Baker with the body with the choke slam to the bodyguard. Just bodies and wrecks all over the place. Sai trying to channel up all the energy he's got. It looks like oh running knee right over the bodyguard. Sai with a pin. But Seuss breaks it up. Baker sends Zeus to the outside. Sai now all alone with bodyguard in the ring. Is Sai going to hit the diving stop? He does. He pins bodyguard. And Sai and Baker win the world tag team titles. They win the world tag team titles. Sai with the diving stomp. He puts away Bodyguard and manages to win the World Tag Team Titles. The World Tag Team Titles have been won by Sai and Baker. Sai and Baker. Ryuji Sai not content to just being the All Asian Heavyweight Champion, but is now the World Tag Team Champion along with Baker. Baker hasn't even been into All Japan in several years. A few years. A few years. We'll call it a few years. <coughs> Sai managed to trap the bodyguard and keep him alone for almost three minutes of an onslaught of offense before he managed to succumb to a side diving stop. And now lands in has gold. Not just the all Asian heavyweight title, but the all the, the world tag team titles as well. It looks like Lands In is having a good night. If your name is Joji Sai. Sai winning the tag team titles. I believe he has challenged with for them before, but now he has the gold along with Baker. Will Dylan Baker become a lands and wrestler? That's a good question to ask. If they're a team together, they might start working together. It's hard to say. But tonight, the world tag team titles change hands. Baker and Cy. Interesting enough, they are in the Champions Carnival this coming month. And they are not in the same block, if you can believe it. They are not in the same block. So that helps out that they're the World Tag Team Champions and they don't have to face each other in the, in the, the Champions Carnival. But should they win each other's blocks, they will have to face each other. And when that time comes... Will there be sentimentality because of the fact they are World Tag Team Champions? Well, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Dave, your administrator. I uh, want to thank you guys for listening to the English commentary for All Japan Pro Wrestling Super Saitama Arena Show 325. We're here in Long Beach, California. Uh, we're getting ready to watch the Strong Style Evolved, but we're super pumped for the all Japan 325 show and so we're here we're doing the commentary we're broadcasting out to all you guys listening and uh, we will be uploading this for folks that want to listen in uh, later uh, listen to stuff um, so you don't have to worry about the, the buffering or the lag or you know what have you anyways uh, 
so uh, we just want to thank you guys for listening. And, you know, uh, we might do this running into the Champions Carnival. Um, it's a fairly solid chance if we could just smooth out a few things. But regardless, um, it looks like we're moving into the main event, which will be Big Joe, Killer Joe Doring versus the ace, Kento Miyahara. And Kento has arguably been the shot in the arm that all Japan needs and deserves. And he is a phenomenal wrestler. He definitely embodies a spirit of all Japan that will not die and wants to live and gain notoriety. And all Japan deserves a Kento Miyahara. Um, I would not call him the savior of all Japan, but I would definitely call him the ace because he's earned it. He is a fantastic wrestler. He's charmed the fans. He's very good at what he does, and he believes in himself. And when you see him, it's hard not to think that this is somebody that you could invest the future of your wrestling promotion for for at least 20 years. Um, Jumbo Suruta, you before the... Um, the uh, before him getting sick, uh, you could honestly see him going from 1970, uh, geez, uh, 1978 or 1977, whenever he started, to the 90s. That's 30 years of being able to be a top guy in the promotion or somebody that you know you keep your eye on, and that's Kento all over. Um, Big Joe, Killer Joe. Um, he's definitely proven that he is a top dog in all Japan and I am very grateful for him and for the fact that he was able to beat cancer and get back to what he's doing and that's kicking ass. And so we are here. It's the main event. Killer Joe versus Ace Kento. It's going to be a hell of a match. I, uh, I feel very honored to be able to call this play by play and for you guys to be able to listen and thank you guys for your time and your patience and so we are heading into the main event and there is the ace right there kento miyahara the man arguably you could say he helped light the fire of youth in all Japan pro wrestling because he's a very he's a young guy. That's the thing is I believe he's not even 30 yet. And so the fact that he has one of the longest reigns as an all triple crown champion and he's not even 30 yet, you know, that really speaks volumes um for him. He's got a, a long way to go and I feel that as long as uh World Japan or All Japan takes care of him, um he will take care of All Japan and he will be somebody that will take care of all Japan and will see it through the dark times and the good times. And so that's all you could ever ask for as your ace. And I just checked and Kento is barely 29 years old. He is not 30 years old. He is a baby. He's got lots of time to go and break hearts and set records and probably become, uh, you know, the top star of uh, Tokyo Sports one day because he just needs the audience. He is a phenomenal wrestler. He do he knows his role. He does it very well. Um, I think Akiyama and Kinsuke Sasaki and everybody that had a, ha a part in helping develop Kinto as a, a wrestler should pat themselves on the back because he is... He, he is the archetype of what you want in an ace of your wrestling promotion. And he came out of nowhere. And so that is that speaks volume to me. If he was a, a if he was in DDT, he'd probably be making a, a way bigger amount of money, but he's not in DDT, he's in all Japan, and he's proud to be in all Japan. He's proud to help bring back the luster to the brand. And the luster is coming back. And they have a streaming service and people are getting to see it, and that's why we're all here today, guys. So here comes the champ right here. The man. The I believe he's a Minnesota Vikings fan. He might be a Packers fan. But either way, he's from the big up north. 
this big bad runaway locomotive you and I know him as Killer Joe it will be the shutdown German suplex versus the revolution bomb and for some reason I think three is the lucky number tonight folks I think three of somebody's finisher is what we're gonna need to see before they put away their opponent I don't know why you know some in, in Japanese wrestling you know you're used to seeing the, the finisher get hit multiple times it, it's nothing new you know we're used to seeing it but for some reason I think three is a lucky number. So whoever hits their finisher the third time, it's sort of like punch out where once they get that third KO, that's it. It's over. So if you're watching this live, mark my words, whoever gets the third finisher off, that's your winner. And here's the PWF announcements right here. And of course, the title belt being shown to the challenger and the champion. <coughs> Kento showing no emotion. Joe pacing back and forth. I think he's just eager to get started. Joe's really good at two things, talking and whooping ass. Kento is really good at one thing, looking good and whooping ass at the same time. If you look at Kento's history, it's very storied in that he started out in Kinsuke office and he jobbed literally all the time while he was in Noah, uh, while Kinsuke's office, Kinsuke office was working with Noah and, uh, jobbed nonstop all the time to, uh, everyone and anyone and to see him transform into what he is now is unbelievable, unbelievable transformation. And Big Joe, of course, it can't be said enough that uh, Big Joe beating cancer was uh, something that I think really cemented him as somebody that wouldn't just be another wrestler who overcame something. He became a person who learned how to destroy this thing that could change people's lives and just refuse to let it beat him. So congratulations to Joe on that and becoming Triple Crown Champion and as well as winning the uh, Royal Road Tournament last year. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having some, uh, some login trouble. Oh. Oh no. We lost internet connection for a second, but I'm going to attempt 
to reconnect. And hopefully that'll get things back up and running. Oh no! The live feed. The live feed got messed up. The live feed got messed up. But that's okay. We're going to fix it all in just a moment. Well, hopefully it'll get solved in a moment. There we go. Okay. My apologies, folks, for uh, missing out for the first, uh, I don't know, minute, solid minute of action. But we will join you now. And uh, Joe is outside with his head in between the uh, rungs of the um, security railing. And Kento is choking the ever-loving life out of him. We're attempting to get our live feed back on right now. Joe's still laying on the ground as Kento is uh, fixing his boots. Joe managing to get a pow to get a uh, uh, spine buster on uh, Kento, send him down to the ground. Joe finally beginning to get back his bearings. We are still attempting to get our life feed back on, but we might just have to sacrifice it for this last match. We are here live, though, if you can hear us. I think we're almost back to being logged into the live feed. Here we go. I think we've got everything back under control. There we go. There we go. Okay. We are back. Big Joe has control of Kento. Rolls him back into the inside. Joe collecting himself after an early beatdown from Kento. Big elbow from Joe. Drops it down. Gets a two count from Kyohei Wada. Joe back on the offensive. Gets a Boston Crab on Kento. Really sitting it down. Got a good angle on it to put a lot of pressure on that lower back of Kento. Kento trying to reach for those ropes, but Joe is trying to get a good angle on that Boston Crab. Make sure to put a lot of pressure on that lower back. Joe will make Kento pay for every mistake in this match. I guarantee it. Joe now with a big elbow shot to the back of Kento. Kento trying to fight back with elbows. But Joe just smiling. Not wanting to take any of that crap. And a big running charging shoulder block. Kento... Definitely had his bell rung on that one. Two count. Kento wisely putting his foot on the ropes. Not using much energy to break that count. Big boot by Joe. It almost seems like Joe is just taunting Kento. Just playing with him. Joe certainly has the size and the strength. And at times it even seems like he has the speed... Over Kento because as as fast as Kento can go, Joe can use that same speed when it matters because he is not someone who has semen in their shoes. He moves quite quick on his feet. 
Joe does. Joe picking up Kento now. Going for a vertical suplex. Joe has him lifted up. For a solid 30 seconds before he drops him down. Kento definitely wishes it was Monday. Kento manages to kick out. Joe looking very comfortable in the ring. Just taking apart Kento little by little. Technically, Joe doesn't even have to do much else. He just has to wear out Kento enough so that he does not have enough spirit. Drop kick from Joe so that he does not have enough spirit to fight with all of his being. If Joe draws him, then Joe retains the title and he'll go into the Champions Carnival as the champion. That certainly has its advantages. Rather than working your way from the bottom and going to the top. Joe now sends Kento off the ropes. Kento with a low altitude drop kick. And another one right to the face of Joe. Joe looking to be a little staggered. Kento finally starting to get some momentum up. But Joe with a little punt kick to, to the face of Kento. Telling Kento, you ain't nothing. Joe, it seems like he's enjoying just pummeling Kento. Vertical suplex from Kento. Vertical suplex from Kento. But Doring is right back up. Kento... Stalking Joe though. Kento with a running knee right to the face of Joe. Kento might not be Jun Akayama, but he definitely knows how to use those knees. Kento very slow to get up. Kento and Joe on the ring apron now. Kanto, Joe manages to stagger Kanto with an elbow, but Kanto with a kick right to the face of Joe, and a knee right to the face of Joe on the ring apron. Kanto is out on the floor, and he is dazed. Joe does not know where he is at. You might think he's in, in Egypt right now. Kento tries to get Joe into the ring. Kento now trying for a German suplex off the ring apron. From the outside. Kento wants to hurt Joe. If he German suplexed him from that angle, his head would hit right into the railing. But Joe blocks it. Joe slowly starts collecting himself. Joe has been Triple Crown Champion since October. Could, to be, could today be the day that he costs up the Triple Crown? Powerball on the outside! Or is Joe going to roll over Kento? And hold on to that triple crown until the champion's carnival, the end of the champion's carnival, in which he will find his dethroner. Naya Nomura checking on his stablemate, Kento Miyahara. Miyahara down, but definitely not out yet. Joe tells Wada to go look after Miyahara. Miyahara definitely looks out of it. 
Wada is giving him the count. If Wada makes certain that Kento cannot answer the count, Joe will win this match. Joe now putting his hands on K on Wada, never a good idea. Joe is going to roll up Miyahara and throw him right back in the ring. Joe is just playing with Miyahara at this point. Roll up. Only a two count. Kento still got some life in him left. I'm not sure how much, but it's got to be enough to kick out of a two count. Joe now. Bouncing Kento off the ropes. Spine buster. With some power from Joe. Joe with the cover. Only a two count. Joe getting a little frustrated now. Joe put some stank on that, that spine buster. Some power. And it could not put away Kento. But Kento is not your ordinary guy. Joe now just taunting Kento. Joe picking up Kento, Kento with the with the with the tornado DDT. Kento now slowly trying to feel the energy of the crowd and get back up into this match. Kento now charging up that knee. He hits that knee on Joe. He goes for a count. For, only gets a two. Kento. Joe. German suplex. Delay German suplex. Joe kicks out at two. But Kento's starting to build a roll. Joe is still out of it. Kento is stalking Joe. He wants another shot at the German suplex. He's going to try to shut it down. The shutdown German suplex. Joe shugs it off. Joe goes to the lariat. The flying body press. He only gets a two. Joe gets him up. He's got the revolution bomb. Kento counters with a roll up of his own. Only gets a two. Kento with the knee right to the head of Joe. Joe is down. Joe is down. Kento is looking into the lights, but he is still more active than Joe. Joe looks like he got hit with a sack of quarters. Doring and Kento both slow to get up. Joe now on his feet. Kento eats an elbow from Doring right to the face. <clears throat> Joe tells D Kento to come on. Kento eats an elbow from D Doring from Doring eats an elbow from. Kento, Kento with the elbow to Joe, Joe elbow to back and forth, they trade elbow shots now, Kento and Joe, Kento with several headbutts now, Joe makes him eat a short arm lariat right to the face and Kento folds up like an accordion, Kento eats a pile driver, Joe pins him, only gets a two count. Joe picks up his lifeless body. Fireman's carry. Lariat! One, two, no. Joe is throwing everything at him. 
And Kento is still not going down. Doring gonna set him up for the revolution bomb. Is he gonna hit it and go home with the title? Revolution bomb, no! Kento with the knee! Right to the face of Doring. And another one! Kento trying to build that offense, but Joe looks pissed. Joe with two mysterious, and they hit each other in midair. I think I think Joe went for the body press and Kento went with the knee. And Kento's knee hit right in the face of Joe or the chest. Kento totally feeling and stalking it. Another knee to the back of the head of Joe. Shut down German suplex. Gets him in. One, two, three. Kento wins. Kento wins. Kento is the new Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. He could not. I cannot believe it. Kento could not be stopped by Joe Doring. Joe looks very, very pissed. He does not know where he's at. He does not know what happened. I bet if it wasn't for the rationale of hearing a three count, he would have realized this match is still going on. But Doring is out of it. That last knee to the back of the head, I think, rung the bell of Doring. But Kento... Kento won the Triple Crown. He pinned Doring right in the middle of the ring with the shutdown German suplex. And we have a new Triple Crown champion. Nomura is there to take care of Miyahara. And Miyahara is once again the Triple Crown heavyweight champion. Doring exits out. But Kento, Kento reclaims the Triple Crown. Doring could not hang on. He could not hit that Revolution Bomb. And that made the difference as Kento was able to hit the German Suplex and the Shutdown German Suplex. Doring, I think, did not have a solid game plan for taking on Kento other than to beat the living hell out of him, essentially. Joe is re-entering the ring now. He's shaking Kento's hand. And he's walking away. Joe, I think, is throwing a little off balance by what happened here. I don't think he expected to lose. I think Joe was expecting to, to put away Kento. Maybe fairly early on. But Kento managed to hang in there. And Kento persevered. He is now the the new world triple the new world triple he, he's the new triple crown champion. I'm sorry folks. It's been a long night. <laughs> Saitama Super Arena gets to see the new triple crown champion. It is Kento Miyahara. The question is can he hold on to the heavyweight title? And win the Champions Carnival while he is champion. That is the question we have to ask ourselves now. Because we are not that long away from the Champions Carnival. Champions Carnival starts in about a week and a half. Maybe two. And that man right there is in the Champions Carnival. Could he win it? And be the Triple Crown Champion at the same time? I want to say that that would be making history, but there might be other wrestlers that have done it. But Kento Miyahara has won the Triple Crown Heavyweight title tonight in Saitama Super Arena. We want to thank you guys again for watching the All Japan Worldwide Fan Group English commentary for this event. 
Kanto walking out as world champion. Or I'm sorry, as triple crown heavyweight champion. I did not expect to see this. I bet Joe Doring was not expecting to see this, but this is what's happening. This is now Kento. Kento is on top. Once again, he is the heavyweight champion of all Japan. He is the triple crown heavyweight champion. Kento, of course, cannot resist walking away from the ring without saying some words to his fans, which are practically all of the All Japan fans, so I can imagine he's heading back, and there's no Yoshi Tatsu there to hold him back from getting the microphone, so he'll be able to say what he wants to say. But congratulations to Kento. A lot of people wanted to see him win today. Me, personally, I thought I'd see Joe win. But it's not to say that Joe's written out of the book. Kento really is something special, though. I will not take away anything of that from Kento. Um, I just think that uh, possibly Joe might have been a better champion since you're expanding out west-wise, or at least expanding out to English-speaking audiences, but I I have to remember, though, that the booking is oriented towards uh, Japanese booking uh, and Japanese sentimentalities, not so much what we want, but, you know, who knows. Um, I have to say that... Uh, I would not have gone this road, but I also would not have go um, this road with uh, the World Tag Team titles. But, you know, we have to just trust in uh, how things go with uh, the booking and such and uh, just let it run its course. Um, I want to, again, say thank you to watching the uh, English commentary. And hope that you found it helpful and uh, you enjoyed uh, what we presented here today, tonight, day, whatever. And uh, just want to let you know that if this is half as successful as I hope it is, uh, we will try to do uh, the Champions Carnival matches um, during the month of April. And so um, that would be really cool. We could use feedback. Uh, I've asked a couple of you to be guest commentators, and so uh, I would totally be down for that. I would love some help <clears throat> on uh, trying to just pick the product overall better, you know, trying to get, you know, good English commentary for all Japan shows, you know, uh, trying to get people pipelined into information that they don't have that they're curious about, and um, that's why we're doing this. That's why we have All Japan Worldwide fan group. That's why we're all Pudesu fans is because, you know, we, we go through the effort to look for this stuff and to watch it because we know, it, we, we feel in our hearts it's a superior thing than American wrestling. And, uh, I don't think I need to say more than that. So, um, yeah. I want to thank you guys again for listening. Uh, it's only going to get better. Uh, we definitely had some technical hiccups, but we are going to work on them in the future. And uh, it's only uh, going to grow. And with your guys' help, we're going to make it pretty good. And hopefully my play-by-play -play will grow in time. Sort of like Kento's ability to walk on stairs. Because if you're watching, he is kind of a goofball on the stairs and he can't help going back into the ring and grabbing that damn mic and talking but he's pretty natural at it so I can't blame him if he's helping bring people get into the promotion then it's fine by me um, I think that Kento is an amazing wrestler he definitely knows what he's doing he's very aware of who he is um, 
I would hope that as All Japan grows, there will be more guys that will want to take the lead like Kento and uh, really win over the crowd um, because that's what All Japan needs. It needs young guys that are going to wrestle their asses off and really get into being a part of the All Japan experience. Um, it's not just uh, being a wrestler. It's fans like that little boy right there. And uh, it's wanting to interact with other people to say, hey, you know, it's okay to like this stuff, you know, because I like it too. <laughs> and that's why we form this community. So, uh, yeah, you know, you don't ever have to feel like a weirdo or uh, a standout or whatever because you like Japanese wrestling. Because guess what? There's a whole bunch of us that like it too. And we're here to have you back. So... Anyways, uh, this is Dave, your admin from uh, Worldwide, All Japan Worldwide Facebook group. Just uh, going to sign off here in just a second. I uh, want to thank you all again. Probably the third or fourth, fifth, twelfth time I've thanked you guys. But again, you know, I really appreciate you guys uh, opening your ears and your minds to me in my commentary. And we will be back in a couple of uh, weeks for the uh, Champions Carnival. But um, we're going to end with Kento Miyahara posing for the fans. New Triple Crown Champion. Again, putting away Joe Doring with the shutdown German suplex. I'd uh, put it in about 20 minutes. Um, very good match. Thought it told a very good story. I thought it showed that without the revolution bomb that... Joe could not put away Kento, which is a good story. Um, it would be nice to see Joe get back in the title picture, but it might not be right now. It might not be the summer. It might not be the fall. It, it might be um, he might win the Royal Road Tournament and then get another shot then. I'm fine with that, but um, I would still would prefer to see Zeus win it in July. I think he's the guy that need to build towards, I think, people like him enough i think they just need to give him a chance kento you know it's not like anybody had like the confidence in him to make him the undisputed ace but he just got it they put him there and they put him in the spot and they gave it to him and he just filled it out i think zeus would do the same but again the 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 market the the, the booking's not done towards my sensibilities it's done towards japanese sensibilities and i respect that um i would rather have the promotion booked the way it's booked now and the way it's been booked then uh have somebody say hey we need to book this towards western sentimentalities and so yeah i'm cool with kento being champion again he is the ace of the promotion but like i said he's not the savior it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for the uh Champions Carnival, if they're in the same block or not. I can't remember if him and Yoshitatsu are, but I would definitely say that Kento has definitely got a lot of work ahead of him in the Champions Carnival because all those uh, guys that are in the block with him are going to want to take his head off and soften him up because if they can win their block, they'll just get another shot at Kento. Kento will be softened up and they'll be able to just take the belt off of him really easy. I hope not, though. We don't need any more hot shotting, guys. We do not need it. And we don't need another hero. We don't need another way home. All we need, a, all we want is just to find. No, I messed that up. All we want is, all we want is, life beyond Thunderdome. There we go. Ah, we want to all get beyond the Thunderdome. So, anyways, I am going to sign off. Thank you guys for joining me. Kento looks like he's going to be walking around for a few more minutes, but uh, I don't need to comment on that. You guys have a great night. Uh, thank you again for listening, and uh, mahalo. <laughs>